Deep fat fried. Dun 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 dun. dun. Paul, what the fuck are you wearing? My name's you not Paul look Swabby. You ridiculous, Paul. You'll be calling me by my real name. Shit britches? No, that was me nickname back in college. <laughs> me real name is Simon Saltworthy Slartwell. <laughs> Slartwell. Pirate of the high seas, I matey. I thought you were a fat beard. No, that's another guy. Fat beard? You're okay, not fat beard? All right. No. Simon Saltwater, what? Slarcy? Simon Saltwell Slartman. <laughs> That's not I'm his name. I'm just gonna call you. I'm just gonna call you Salty, buddy. Salty. Captain Salt. Captain Salt. That sounds. Keep fun. it simple. <laughs> I'm Saltworth Slarvy the Twelfth Pirate Extraordinaire. Ar. 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 Is there a sock on our one? No, it's not a sock. It's no, Paul's hat. That's the, well, that no, that isn't my oh. hat. That's one of Rob Schneider's hats that uh, we defaced. Yeah. Paul was uh, going around wearing a Rob Schneider hat, and he didn't realize it until we watched the Rob Schneider episode, and then he cut it in half. So that's something you guys hey, missed if you're not patrons. That uh, Adam Sandler wore the same. Yeah, so uh, it's a pretty good thing Paul was able to get that hat off his head before he turned into dude, one of those. I don't know. It might have been too much Rob Schneider. A lot of people were like, man, fuck this episode, dude. The Rob Schneider shit. Yeah, I dude. didn't know, man. I didn't know I that. Mean, I can't blame him. I mean, Rob Schneider is pretty terrible. And so this is helping. I, I had to get a new hat because obviously that's my dead hat up and there. And it's a beautiful hat, I would say. And so I decided to try something a little more flamboyant. A little less middle-aged man and a little more... Gay futuristic pirate, I guess, is what I'm going for. Is that how awesome. you see yourself, Paul, in the future? You're going to be a gay futuristic pirate that just dances around? In the future? I see myself that way now. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, look, you're wearing a Nirvana shirt. I mean, are you, are you just, I don't know, man. Gay pirate is all the rage in the future, you know. I want some more, uh, like, It's considered quaint to wear this Is it going to be like a garb. steampunk kind of future? Is it going to be, what is it? What are we going no, for? I'm a pirate. Ah. The ocean's become popular again. <laughs> So piracy becomes a thing again. Ah. And so I'm a pirate. Okay. Yeah. Good. All all air travel is outlawed in 2020 after the re-election of Trump. Yeah. Because he realizes that his wall isn't working and that most illegal immigrants are coming in from elsewhere. So and he so builds the sky wall. He builds the sky wall, yeah. <laughs> what about the dome, dude? I thought we were getting the dome. No, that, that never comes to fruition. He <sighs> says he's going to build it, but all that really happens is that air travel becomes passe and yeah, they just ocean shoot. travel becomes they the They just shoot way. everything down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, well. Kinda, and so I'm from that. I'm from there. I was yeah. kind of hoping for like instantaneous travel. Like, what about fucking teleportation? Do we get that in no. the future? Oh, damn. It sucks. No, but I have a sweet pirate ship, though, with cannons on it. So we get that. Probably again. got fucking water canyon on the ship, dude. Canyon? Can uh, look, 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 I got tongue tied. Stupid cannons. son of a bitch. Can't even fucking talk. I know, dude. <laughs> it's, a fuck, it's a fucking curse. Yeah, mush mouth motherfucker. So, Sky, about this foot race we're going to have. Oh, yeah. In the pre-post show, Scotty, uh, or TJ, I guess, challenged Scotty to a foot race. Yeah. Let's do it, man. Which I think is horribly in inadvisable. I think TJ is probably going to tear an ACL doing it. But I'll it'll be, be fine. It'll be fun. No, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to destroy Scotty, dude. All right. I'm going to fucking destroy you. TJ, right. there's no you. way you can run as fast as Scotty can. I'm going to destroy him. I there's welcome just this, no dude. way. It's going to be nothing. So so okay. What are what are what's going to be the distance of this foot race? Is are we talking about a sprint or are we talking about a dash? A sprint, or are we man. talking about a, whatever TJ wants, dude? A fucking yeah, you know, like a. Do you want to do like once around your block? Yeah, let's do that. Oh no, that's too long. That's too long. I'm talking about a speed. I'm not talking about an endurance race. I'm talking about a speed race. Okay, so from your house to the end of the block, then. Yeah, something like that. Okay, fair enough. But I don't want to. I don't want to race on a, a. We need to find like a track or something. Why? Because I need a, ni a nice official terrain, dude. I'm not official terrain. Asphalt is fine for running on if you got normal sneakers. Well, I don't have. I mean, I need new shoes. I need running shoes. You know, oh it's gonna take a while God. to set this up. Oh, see this. It's gonna take a while. This is like TJ's. Remember when he said I don't he have could running farm equipment like a peasant. Know? Hey, I'm still doing that. What? Okay, well, where's my crops? They're due today. TJ. They're not due. The you never winter said they were crops due today. are due today. All today, right. Do you have shoes? Do I have shoes? Yeah, I got shoes. Okay. Do you have any crops? I need running shoes. 
Okay, go buy some running shoes. Okay, race. that's easy. Yeah. Yeah, the crops are being processed, Paul. They'll be, process? they'll be there soon. No, they should be delivered today. Can you put them in my hand right now? Uh, no, because you never said today. You have you have failed as I a peasant, failed. and I've lopped your head off, and I have you, not lose, failed. you lose the I have challenge. not failed. You're you failed as land. a peasant. If you were a peasant, and I came to you and said the winter crops are due today, and you had nothing, you had nothing to show for it, said, no fields, no plant. It's not spring yet, is it? Can you take me it's on a tour spring. of your plants? Where are your plants? It's not spring. Spring don't start until March few, 21st. I think you got a few more weeks, dude. Yeah. No, but the winter crops are due today. There oh, are, the winter crops. Yeah, oh, the vegetables shit. that grow during the winter. The tubers. Oh, yeah. So where are the those, The potatoes. TJ? Where are they at? Where's the potatoes, TJ? They're not quite you ready yet. You fail. They're not You're quite done. ready. You're done. I've ready. gutted you in front of the rest of the no, peasants now. No. Hung you upside Wrong. down and let Wrong. your inte- <laughs> intestines fall out. That's not how any of this works. No, that is exactly how it works. I'm your lord. Yeah, you don't remember the bet? The, the yeah, but you got to fucking you got to give me an advanced deadline. You can't just be like now, you know. He's the lord. It's yeah. your what? job to know when the fucking crops are he due. Is the TJ, landlord, not mine. TJ. Hey, you're the fucking leader here. You need to fucking let your subordinates know All what right. you need and when you need it. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut your fucking head off so the rest of the people know when the due date is next year. No. Yeah, you worse. lose. No. Sorry, TJ. You no, lose. I don't lose. <laughs> Sorry. You're, Bullshit. I can't hear you, TJ. You're Bullshit. headless. You're headless, Bullshit. TJ. Bullshit. I ain't Your headless. Your fucking severed head headless. cannot talk. Hello. Hello. All right, whatever. All right. Hello. Whatevs. Fuck you guys. It's time Dude. to talk about bullshit. TJ, don't you feel like what? there's a lot of negativity in the world? No. I do. You don't? I don't. You don't feel that way? I feel like there's well, no it, negativity. All, you know what, TJ? If you just uh, go around the internet, look at some internet comment sections, look at yeah. social media, a lot of negativity going on. That's you know, I guess you're right. Yeah. So I don't think with these internet, these weird internet subcultures, I'm like, we need to find some positive people. Positive. I want positivity. So this episode is pro anorexia and pro AIDS. Awesome. I think that's really what we need. Finally, dude. some positivity some in the positive world, right? Fucking people. Why can't we be positive about positive things, though? Why has it got to be anorexia and AIDS? They're positive, though. Those they are, are positive. You have, have you heard? You haven't They're yet heard HIV the case for how positive. great they are, have you? We're no. gonna learn about these communities and learn about what they believe, you know. And you know, maybe at the end of it, you'll be pro anorexia and AIDS. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I thought it was interesting that when we started, to, you know, trying to consider where do these weird little subcultures kind of come from? Like, what is the appeal to? Uh, so you put up like, like a picture of like Tumblr or something. Okay. <clears throat> and um, I just kind of thought that was interesting. So uh, what they're actually classified as when they're studied is mental illness communities. Cool. So it's basically this. Uh, having a sense of belonging, identifying with, and feeling like part of a community largely defines the mental illness subculture on Tumblr. Cool. Adler and Adler found that when users discover a community they fit into it, quote, it gave them a sense of identity. They experienced this whether they, whether or not they were active in the community. Uh, so even people. So even if they're just lurking around and not really participating, they, feel they still feel of, like I'm part of something. So when it kind of clicks, so like in the case of pro anorexia, it's like, yeah, I kind of I identify with this. So maybe I'll, I'll just like the post or I just look at the post. Man, I wish I could be pro anorexia. I'd be skinny as fuck. So, However, the Adlers also noted that their, quote, their identification with the community might also reinforce the self-injurious behavior. Eh. Which is a, a common pattern in people who are anorexic. I've never heard of such a thing. Uh, there are basically, pro- like, it's, it's, there's a strong correlation between people who are anorexic and suicide. I don't think so. Which we'll get into more later. Uh, I don't think later. so, Scotty. It's actually a false fact. Okay, well, you have every right to question false that. False fact, Scotty. You have every right to question it, TJ. Fake. You should question fake, all information you receive, TJ. Isn't yeah. a false fact not a uh, fact? False so, fact. Which, of course, can push those not engaging in their behavior at the moment to relapse. This is especially concerning with Tumblr specifically, as all aspects of the site intermingle, exposing users to some of the material communities that they identify with, even though they may not actually identify with the material itself at the moment. So, uh, they should have hurry explained an article, Anorexia on Tumblr, a characterization study that Tumblr is, quote, Tumblr is used, Tumblr is used disproportionately more frequently as a support platform on maintenance of anorexic lifestyle because of the encouraging of sharing content that promotes negative perceptions of body image of pro-suicide sentiments. Cool. 
Tumblr's so, pretty hard. So Tumblr is basically like the ground floor, like the base. Ground zero. For this, for this kind of movement. And we're actually going to look at some <coughs> Tumblrs uh, a little bit later on in the Neat. episode. I like Tumblrs. I'm so glad I deleted my Tumblr. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I had a Tumblr for a while, but I just fucking nuked it, man. I was like, goodbye, Tumblr. I mean, it is kind of the most toxic. Tumblr really is the most toxic. Yeah, it was a shithole. I mean, the T in Tumblr stands for toxic. So have you guys ever heard of pro-anorexia before? Um, very little. I know that I've heard about people who go around and have like pro-anorexia stances, but I've never actually looked into <laughs> it. Isn't there a broad that's like popular right oh, now? Eugenia, all... Eugenia Cooney. We are going to cover her at some point. We're okay. getting into her. Right, fair enough. Yeah, I don't, that's, I mean, that's what I know about pro-anorexia, that there's some, I'm a some chicks running around bitch. that are like clearly anorexic that people kind of worship and girls try to emulate. Yep. Uh... So pro Anna, which is what is basically what we're talking about. Uh, we're pro Anna. That's one L away from being pro anal too. So, <laughs> which I'm all for. Yeah, pro anal. Yeah, I can get behind that. Uh, pro refers to the promotion. I can get behind that. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, Scotty. Anything I ever said bad about you was wrong. That was a gem. Uh, so proan refers to the promotion of behaviors related to eating disorder, uh, anorexia, nervosa. nervosa. It is often referred to as simply as Anna. Uh, the lesser used term uh, promia refers to likewise to bulimia nervosa. Wait, why is that less good? I don't know. I it seems it. like, you know, if I was a fucking person with an eating, if I had to choose an eating disorder, uh, disorder I'd much rather be bulimic than anorexic. Right, because yeah, bulimics still get to taste all yeah, that delicious Yeah, you still get food. to eat as much as you want. You just, go gotta, up. you just got to get re- yeah. used to puking you it up pur- afterwards. You purge. Yeah, you yeah. have to yeah. taste binge it and after. purge, binge and purge, binge and purge. That seems way more fun. I mean, you I do it quick enough, it's just like eating it twice. Yeah, you know, do it before you digest too much, and then it's like, yeah, second helping, you know? Oh. Second second large pizza I can coming see, up. I can see you guys getting roasted in the comments already. <laughs> Shut up. Literally <laughs> coming up. <laughs> 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 oh man! And the puns keep coming on this one. Ooh, yeah! All right. So, medical professionals treating eating disorders have long noted that patients in recovery programs often call something do something called symptom pooling. Symptom pool, huh? Yeah, which is banding closely together for emotional support and validation. Which so is basically, Tumblr. it yeah, but it's just like uh, instead of having one enabler it's basically a community, a community uh, based around enabling you and your bad behavior uh, when do these communities become like like not just support groups and actual like advocacy for a bad are. thing that's what they are they already really are. we're, we're, oh, oh, we're okay. going we're going to look into when you see these tumblers and other uh, spots that i've pulled it's going to yeah we're going to have we're going to take a look so unfortunately it encourages some really bad behavior so in this context people with anorexia may collectively normalize their condition Definitely not as an illness, but as an accomplishment of self-control and an essential part of their identity. Starving oneself becomes a lifestyle choice rather than an illness. So they don't see it as an illness. They see it as like, this is a healthy lifestyle, like to maintain this healthy weight, which to them, and I read a lot about people with their experience with with anorexia, was that they never, they never saw themselves as thin. Like, so they'd be real thin and everyone else around them would be like, are you okay? You're disgusting, basically. Yeah. And they would be like, I'm not even thin. I'm fat. Like, so they have this, they have this in flawed kind of internal perception of themselves where it's like, you know... They, it's like a form of dysmorphia yeah. or something. Right. So, we're talking about the online presence. Though. So, such advocacy is forced on the net mainly through uh, tight-knit support groups centered on web forums and more recently on social networks of, uh, services such as Tumblr, uh, LiveJournal, Facebook, and MySpace. So, this, this, that's kind of antiquated, but... Uh, Tumblr is the main place, though. From what I saw, there are some forums that talk about this, but Tumblr was the main place I saw the really ardent kind of support uh, for this movement. Live journal, man. Live journal. That uh, used to be the shit back in the day, so, man. Unsurprisingly, uh, most of these groups are overwhelmingly female, and a lot of times it's frequently the only support these people get. So it's kind of like some people, it's a secret in their lifestyle. I mean, obviously, at a certain point, I think most people kind of realize you're anorexic or you have some sort of problem with food when you're rail thin unless they know you have some other you know illness like you're being treated for cancer or something so there's some uh little weird um like studies here of yeah. these people do so you want to talk about that tj yeah uh so members of such of, of such support groups may endorse anorexia and or bulimia as desirable 84 and 64 percent uh percent respectively, respectively. so 84 percent support anorexia yes 64 percent support bulimia and that was in 2010 
So we don't yeah. know what the current numbers are. It's been yeah. like nine years. And but. this is really common. So they share crash dining techniques and recipes on 67% of the sites in a 2006 survey, rising to 83% in a 2010 survey. So they're get, they're telling each other the diets they need to follow to get, you know, to be anorexic. Like this is what you're, you, Wait, right. you have to eat. Basically. Isn't the diet you follow when you're anorexic eating nothing? No. No, not quite. Actually, you want to take a look, quick look at one? We got one right here. Yeah, I think we should move on. To uh, this is a pro Anna blog right here. This is a uh, a diet tip. This is the five bites diet plan, Paul. Okay. The five bites diet plan. The diet has been described as <laughs> mental <laughs> gastric bypass. bypass. Yeah. Okay. Obese people can get their stomach stapled so that they feel full on only a few bites of each meal. This diet, therefore, takes a fair bit of self-control. The first three days were the hardest for me. It then got quite a bit easier. The creator of the diet has five bites of each meal, but I made it three bites because this is closer to how much a gastric bypass patient can usually eat. So the theory is like you're going to basically eat like a gastric bypass patient. Breakfast. Three bites of porridge, oatmeal, made with skim milk and one teaspoon of sugar. Okay. Lunch. Three bites of a ham sandwich. Dinner. Three bites of lasagna. It is important that drinks are consumed that have no calories, such as Diet Coke, water, herbal teas, tea, or coffee. Master cleanse fast. So that's how you're going to cleanse your body. Cleanse your colon. Because, by the way, surprisingly, a lot of these people have t- terrible constipation. <coughs> uh, number So a single serving. Uh, two tablespoons of lemon. Two tablespoons of uh, genuine organic maple syrup. One-tenth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And a ten-ounce glass of hot water. Cold water can be used if preferred. So your, and your, your next drink is uh, 60 ounces of water, 12 tablespoons of organic maple syrup. Grade 12, B. Grade B, I guess, if that somehow matters. No grade A syrup. <laughs> 12 uh, tablespoons of lemon juice and half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So that's gonna, that's because they eat out. so little, they can't really shit unless they take these, like, cleansing drinks. Well, well also, that it fills their stomachs up, so their stomach doesn't think, oh, you're starving. Okay. Which is, that's, that's how you're so they feel. basically have to use this to, like, keep their system from just shutting down yeah, and keep their digestive system actually going. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I did. I, it. uh, and Paul, you can how, take, where are you going to get there. two bites of lasagna? Three. Sorry. Three where are you going to get three bites of lasagna? From? I don't know. You're gonna have to make a lasagna, eat three maybe bites and throw it away. Lasagna. Yeah. Maybe three either. bites. Freeze it. Unfreeze it. three bites of it. Eat yeah. that. Another three. Yeah. What about the ham sandwich, though? That seems wasteful. Yeah, well, you know. Because like, you can't later. freeze it's a worth fucking it. ham sandwich. It's worth it to lose weight, Paul. I want to keep scrolling. I think there's actually other diets you can do. Okay, let's see. Super reduction oatmeal diet. So your breakfast is one packet instant oatmeal, any flavor, 120 to 160 calories. You get a, one pack of oatmeal. Uh, lunch is a diet soda. A diet Coke. Mm. Dinner. Dinner. Tea with no calories sweetener, so less than five calories. Yep. So it's just basically oatmeal. The oatmeal diet. So you eat a so the the what you eat is a single pack of oatmeal and then you drink a coke, a diet coke for lunch and you have a tea for dinner and that's your that's your day. So many variations of this. Day 1 you eat a maximum of 200 calories, day 2 eat a maximum of 400 calories, and day 3 eat a maximum of 600 calories. Day 4 eat a maximum of 800 calories, day 5 fast then repeat the cycle. So these people are literally talking about you eating, let's say, 14, 18, 2,000 calories in five days. That's like what you're supposed to eat in a single day. In a day. Well, most people are going to be between 1,500 to 3,000 calories. How about the Russian gymnast diet, okay? <laughs> For breakfast, you eat a glass of either orange or apple juice. Mm. Uh. For lunch, you eat a fruit salad made of kiwi fruit, orange, pineapple, and peeled apples. And a glass of fruit what juice. What peeled apples? I don't know. The skin is bad, I guess. And dinner, a glass of non-carbonated water and a green apple. Damn, those poor Russian gymnasts, man. (laughs) Only 99 pounds, though, Paul. Now I see why they all look nine years old, even though they're like, you know, in their mid-20s. How about the... been starved. Myra Hornbacher diet. One grapefruit for breakfast. Two fat-free pretzels from a bag. Four carrot <laughs> sticks, four celery sticks, and three teaspoons of mustard. Four, so 42 calories. For lunch. 
Then for dinner, one cup fat-free, sugar-free yogurt. And that's a to- that's it. The total is 202 calories, I guess, a day. I mean, as you can see, none of these diets really are at all good. I mean, 200 calories the a day. The Anna I mean. Atkins diet. <laughs> oh, shit. Three egg Combo. white omelet. Cook with two sprays of cooking spray, a white fish fillet baked in foil with five grams of butter, and then a roast chicken drumstick. At least that has that has something. That's actually at least food at every meal. I'll give yeah. it that much. But all yeah, the diets are just okay. are terribly unsafe for you for the most part. I mean, like some of them. I mean, the last one is not maybe it's probably the most acceptable. But I mean, like you're talking about people eating two to six hundred. The calories skinny a day. arse diet. The what is what is this? What do you get to eat? Recipe, one bag tea, one slice oh, lemon. Oh, you drink all day. So you make a dr- you make this drink and yep. then you can drink all you want, but you don't you don't eat anything. Yeah, you get some sugar. That one's literally a starvation diet. Yeah, you're basically living on I mean, I guess you're getting a teaspoon of sugar a day. This is like the kind of dieting that um Christian Bale had to do for the machinist. I think even he like I think I think his diet was like an apple and a can of tuna. Yeah, he ate one apple and one can of tuna each day, and that was all he ate. So he was basically eating one of these anorexic diets. So basically, he he tried a, what basically seems like an anorexic diet to get in that condition, which I guess makes sense if you're gonna yeah if you're gonna do that. Dude, is that a hoodie that's made like a knight's? Yeah. Who would buy such a thing? I don't know. Let's check it out. Where'd it go? There it is. It's 87% off. You can get it for 27 bucks, Paul. Damn, dude. No thanks. 27 bucks, Paul. You can have you can be a knight. That's a passerino for me. You can me. be a knight, Paul. You don't want it? No. How about this? I want that one that makes me look like I've got an unzipped <laughs> shirt and I'm ripped under <laughs> yeah, There you go. <laughs> that's a that's pretty 53% dope. off, dude. 11.59, dude. Go ahead and order that for Paul. What? It looks delicious. It looks amazing, dude. Yeah, I don't think no, dude. Abs. I need a three XL. <laughs> yeah, they don't have a two. They only have a two. Yeah. Sorry, Paul. they don't have a three XL to show your rippling abs, dude. I'm sorry, Paul. Darn it. I'm sorry. Conclusion. With this, we conclude the list of the best pro ana practices to lose wit. White fast. White. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of white. We'll be updating this webpage Keep regularly the for away. newer diet plans. Keep visiting Pro Anna tips, whatever, for thin spiration. Yay, thin spiration. There's like so some next comments. We, have- we can look at the comments. Thanks for the awesome diet plan. I managed to lose three kg of weight in a month. Thank hey, you. Hey, look so at much. this. A dead guy says, I starved to death. Awesome. <laughs> what? You didn't see that. see that? I don't see that one. Oh. Strangely. Uh, Which you diet must not be sensitive use? to ghostly energies. Here's another one. <clears throat> I followed this diet, and I'm six feet under like a retard. Thanks. <laughs> you didn't see that one either? Mm. Have you or anyone out there tried the cotton ball diet? And hey, thanks for the amazing tips. The cotton ball diet? Yeah, what the fuck is that? I had to get surgery to get strings of cotton removed from my intestines. Uh, yeah. yeah, don't do the cotton ball diet, <laughs> retard. As, Hold as on, I'm cons- looking up cotton ball diet. The cotton ball diet is a fad diet that involves consuming cotton balls dipped in liquids such as juices or smoothies. The cotton is intended to make a person's stomach feel full without them gaining weight. I mean, as you can see, gross. these, these communities and these sites just kind of foster this really unhealthy obsession about weight. And about how you should look, and pe- I mean, people are talking about espousing. I mean, even if they're, they might be trolls, of course, but espousing like literally put a foreign substance in your body to stop yourself from eating. Like, check this out. Uh, yes, indeed, the cotton ball diet is an unnatural method to achieve the desired results. This can be fatal and cause serious health hazards, which is very much similar to photobezoar. I don't know what that is. This requires hospitalization and treatments, thus putting all the anna-related hard work at stake in order to feel to fetch quick results in an unnatural way uh, shall always put you at a loss. And then the person responds, you do realize how idiotic you sound, right? Um, they both sound idiotic. Yeah, I mean, but, like he's he's right about the cotton. Ball at least thing, this guy, this guy might natural be or whatever. I don't, I don't think it's a, I don't think the natural way is to basically these anna diets himself. are good, though. Yeah, those are all fine. Don't lose the hard work of your Anna diet. 
eat 200 calories a week, though. That's okay. Thanks for the tips. I am still having some problems with cravings. Any tips? Yeah, yeah. eat enough food. I need help, with <laughs> too, with cravings. I found that you can wear a rubber band around your wrist and pluck yourself every time you think about eating out I, of the diet. It's like, you know, it's such a bad idea. It's because everyone's basically saying, like, I just want to eat. Like, all I think about is eating. It's like you're ignoring what your body is telling you. I pull out patches of my own hair when I get <laughs> cravings. Listen to this person. I don't believe in the use of a rubber band. Even if you pluck it to stop the cravings, you need an unaltered temperament along with persistence. Instead of punishing yourself, why don't you try satisfying the satiety, sat, ah, whatever, by drinking a glass of full of water every time you crave. If that doesn't work, an apple or an orange can always work. But I believe that the glass of water shall do it. Yeah, yeah. man, when I got a rumbling hunger in my belly, I'm like, you know what I could go for right now? Big old tall glass of nice water. Nice glass of water. Mm-mm-mm. I mean, it's just the promotion of this lifestyle. It's like saying, oh, you don't you don't even use a rubber band. Like, the worst case scenario, eat an apple or an orange. Like, no, I want you to encourage people to eat a healthy amount of fucking food and consume enough calories so that they don't feel sickly all the time and have no energy. Yeah, dude. So the next one is we have is there's a um, vice story about people that spent a week in a group of pro anorexia people. I spent a week undercover in a pro anorexia WhatsApp group. The skeletal girls in it bowed before a mysterious leader known as the goddess of emaciation. <sighs> a little bit nuts there, girls. A little bit nuts. Um, a few weeks ago, I was chatting to a friend about the kind of lifestyle choices that can ruin your life. Eventually, we landed on pro Anna. Anna stands for the illness anorexia universa. Yeah. And pro connotes an obsessive and absolute devotion to it. My friend told me that a that wannabe anorexics look for and find each other in forums with the ultimate goal of driving each other deeper into anorexia. It took no longer than five minutes of Googling for me to find a forum full of pro Anna enthusiasts in my country of residence, Switzerland. According to the website, pro Anna is more than a lifestyle, it's a religion. What? There was a post with a list of commandments. Refusing to eat and being ultra thin are signs of true success and strength. Um, <laughs> another titled mm -hmm. Anna's Letter. In these letters, Anna speaks to the reader as the goddess of emaciation, explaining that stomach cramps caused by laxatives are to be celebrated as the death rattle of the hated pounds. The goddess of emaciation also warns if you break her rules, you will be punished. The goddess of emaciation. Dude. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, she needs a metal song the or something. The goddess, dude. I will start for you, goddess of emaciation. <laughs> she is the goddess of emaciation. <laughs> uh, I will force you into the bathroom onto your knees. You will stare at the empty toilet bowl. You will stick your fingers in your throat. And not without pain, your food will come out. You need to do this over and over and over again until you taste blood and water and you know it's all gone. When you stand up, you'll feel dizzy. Don't faint. Stand straight, you fat cow. You deserve all the pain you get, the Post writes. Jesus. So, I mean, like, really fucking controlling behaviors of these groups. Like, like you're in these insular communities of people who are all obsessed with their weight. They all think they look terrible and fat and ugly. And then you just have these people like, you are fat, you are ugly. Dude, what if it turns out me and Paul are anorexic and we just think we're fat? Whoa. No, you what if fat. we're really like emaciated skeletal uh, people? I'm trans anorexic, personally. <laughs> Tranorexic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both Anna's and Mia's bulimia fanatics are extremely organized. It only took a few minutes of browsing the forum to find three WhatsApp groups, all of which I could join after passing an entrance test. Letting them know my height, my age, and my weight. I lied about my age and claimed to be 19. At 5'3", I currently weigh 7.5 stone, 105 pounds. I was admitted and given my target weight, 6.9 uh, stone, 9.6 pounds. That corresponds to a BMI of 16.6. .6. When I type this into Google, the search engine tells me to immediately seek medical help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there were four other girls in the group chat, all aged between 13 and 23. First off, they explained their rules to me. I was allowed a maximum of 800 calories per day. I was not allowed to eat anything after 5 p.m. Every calorie had to be worked off with exercise. 
On Sundays, these skeletal girls send each other full body photographs and pictures of their scales. If you break the rules, you're thrown out of the group. Once I agreed to the rules, I was asked to disclose what I had already eaten that day. I was honest, a small cheese, an egg roll, and a uh, plate of quinoa with uh, vegetables. Uh, I didn't know how many calories that meant. The Annas let this one pass because I was new. The group admin sent me an audio uh, message recommending that I download an app which counts calories meticulously. Then she proudly let us know that so far that day she had only consumed a cappuccino. She was feeling dizzy, she said. Hmm. I mean, so you see how these groups are. It's not like you can say, okay, I'm a part of the group. Yeah, like to literally be part of these WhatsApp groups, you have to apply a, 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 a stringent set of rules that are applied to you. Like calorie count is a really big thing in the pro-anorexia community. Well, and, and also what you track as far as your meals. Like every meal you eat needs to be tracked. Every calorie meticulously tracked. And then you have to, they constantly are reinforcing it by showing pictures. Like, look, I'm, I'm losing weight. Oh, look, here's a picture of me on a scale. I lost two pounds. I'm doing so good. I'm doing so good. What kind of shit-ass parent? Because this some of these people are talking about, this, she said they were between the ages like 13 and 23. And she said some of them, like, here's one talk about their parents are gone and shit. Like, what kind of shitty ass parent, like, watches their kid walk a, walk around an emaciated skeleton and doesn't fucking say, like, okay, you're getting fucking treatment for this. I mean, we'll kind of get into that later, too. This ain't happening. Because there's actually a news story we watch where people kind of explain what kind of goes on with that. Okay. At least from their personal experience. I mean, not everybody that. has parents that give a fuck. Right. Um, let's see. What's this message here? Actually, I want to write this earlier, but I woke up so late. Don't forget that starting tomorrow, we're going to fast. Light things are permitted. I mean, things like coffee and water. Jenny, did you do the workout? Yes. And you? Okay. Something. Nothing about anorexic people is they're, they're really obsessed with exercise, too. I mean, it's not only that. So it's like you have like, and we're going to see this uh, video of this girl. Uh, so you have to come. Not only are you not eating enough calories to even sustain normal human activity, you're also, but you're also doing a lot of cardio, trying to do exercise that you need food to fuel. OK, yep. I'll read that last paragraph. Uh, I wish I could sit with each of the one of these girls and explain that they're on a deadly path. But just before I decided to leave the group, the admin shut it down at the behest of her mom who'd sent her to a clinic. OK, well, that's good. Yeah, she needs to go to a fucking clinic because. So that's not the good. next one I pulled is from a uh, pro and a forum. Cool. This is where people, so this is a big deal here. This is one of the most popular threads on here, which is post pictures of your meals. Part seven. So let's see. Um, hi, everyone. Somehow I can't respond to the post in the old topics, but I can create uh, I can't create own posts anymore. So I've decided to make a new topic. Here's the intake from November 30th. I had around one half of the vegan curry sausage. Vegan. And, uh, vegan sausage. Vegan. <laughs> it's a vegan. Uh, and three pieces of fries. My boyfriend ate the rest. So she ate three she, fries and some of the sausage. So she didn't even eat that whole thing. No. Uh, cucumber water. What? Yep. Okay, that's cucumber water, I guess. That doesn't make sense. Vegan tortellini with veggies and tomato sauce. Had around one third of it. Okay. Um, <coughs> let's see. Breakfast, bacon, eggs, so and green tea. That seems pretty normal. Yeah, none of this seems too... That's not too bad. Uh, Pumpkin-flavored cake pop. Okay. My is this like all they're eating in a day? Yeah, yes. these are people's entire day. This is what <clears> she <throat> ate for a day. What's that? Breakfast, skip. Lunch, peppermint tea, chicken breast, lots of broccoli because I love broccoli. And that thing, which I don't know what it's called. So this person's English. probably about four or five hundred calories in a day. Um, dinner. Oh, no, well, probably not lunch. even that. So some of these are not too, too bad, but not compared Still. to some of that stuff I saw on that last page. What is this? It's just like a lettuce. Yep. Uh, so lettuce calories kebab wrap. Two, OK. And a little tiny thing of what is that? Gummies. Some kind of gummies. I mean, most of these people are barely eating anything. They're probably vitamins. Um, I had this and, coffee and pea coffee soup. Coffee and pea soup. Yep. Oh, That's God. it. That's nothing. Uh, what is that? So uh, I restricted a bit lower than usual today since I went out last night and drank and ate lots. Breakfast, pickled herring. Ew. Whole meal bread and paprika spread with veggies. Blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, it just goes on and on. But you see that most of these people are eating very small portions of food. Okay. Most of them about 400 to 600 calories in a day. I mean, some of these don't look too bad. Some of them are going way overboard. But when you, you have to look at a lot of these, too. A lot of these people aren't even eating these entire things. Some right. of them are. But most, for the most part, a lot of these people... This person just had a monster and a, <laughs> a birthday cake complete cookie? Yep. All right. You need to eat more than that, motherfuckers. You need to eat more than that. Hey, let's but, see that birthday cake cookie. Scroll down. Ooh. And it's a complete cookie. Those are pretty good. I'll eat it, but not for my entire day. <laughs> no, that's all they're going to eat for an entire hey, day. Hey, that don't look as good. Look at that versus this. The yeah, fuck? it looks kind of sad there. <laughs> yeah. It looks fun there. Yeah, it looks like, we And then it's like, eh, all right. I mean, still eat it, but. Looks like I. But like, but like I said, I mean, you can, like, there's a million posts like this. There's people just endlessly talking about what they're eating. So that's a big theme in this so community. So. They're obsessed. And this is like, they're obsessed guess, with showing pictures of what they eat and then telling you how many calories. This is a picture of this chick here. She's all like super scrawny. And most of these people will tell you that they're fat or they're overweight. Yeah, she's that one fat bitch. Yeah, look how fat she Get is. Get back on your diet, bitch. Damn, she's huge. Oh, look at this. Oh, thunder thighs here. Oh, man. Lay off the cheeseburgers, <laughs> you cow. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. Well, we probably shouldn't do that since that's how they think about. Oh, you guys need to call for bullying, dude. Yeah, we're definitely. Well, we're obviously being sarcastic because she's emaciatedly skinny, dude. So way to go, TJ. What I did get thrown off. You did it. You did it first. I just followed your lead. You did it second. This you reinforced my bad behavior. Have you learned nothing from this episode? I'm sure some people. I'm sure if anyone's heard of anyone that's you know anorexic. Uh, that's popular on YouTube. But she, I think she. Yeah, this she's is, worse than this. I've seen worse ones of her. Uh, this is Eugenia Cooney. Eugenia. Oh, Eugenia. I think. Me. Eugenia. I, I'm you're not right. sure. A bunch of people talked about her. She, she got super talked about. The well, corpse yeah. bride. People. Yeah, people were scared. And people thought she was dead at one point. You know. Like, Are they something. sure she's not? Because I mean. <laughs> She has 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube. Everyone hail to the Pumpkin King. It's Actually, like, TJ, know. someone that uh, you, you're friendly with, or you at least know somewhat, uh, Jacqueline Glenn. I was because I was, I was going through her Instagram to look at like you know, basically before and after. Jacqueline Glenn's anorexic. No, she's uh, friends with her and knows her. Oh, okay. Because so I saw her in one of the pictures. I'm like, hey, it's Jacqueline Glenn. But uh, so, and but but anyone that has been associated with her, like Shane Dawson, did something with her. Everyone's like, please help her. Please help her. Right, because there's a bunch of people who are busybodies who are like, we need to save, save her or whatever. And I think Repsion did it, like, oh, get better and all this. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't care about anorexia in general, but just this one case, they're like, we got to do something. Well, because it's so visible. It's <laughs> Repsion, man. Save the, uh, oh my God. save the Eugenia's. Hi, I'm speaking directly to Eugenia Cooney. I want you to get help. <laughs> Please get help and send me views. And give me some views. <coughs> hey, he's doing well. I know. I, uh, I don't hate him. I don't hate the player. I hate the game. <laughs> but yeah, Eugenia Cooney, uh, I don't care. I mean, whatever. She's, you know. But so I told the next article. This God. is. I, I mean, like, last try to start a petition to get her kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> Why? Promoting. Cause, Cause, oh, because I guess she's a bad influence. Yeah, or basically the bad influence. Fuck that. Here's what happened to the beauty blogger. 20,000 people tried to shut down. Man, what about your 20,000 bitty, busy body, fucking hand wringing, goody two shoes, pieces of shit. Eugenia Cooney is seriously underweight. No shit, Sherlock. Although she denies having an eating disorder. Okay, you can't look she, like this and deny having an eating she disorder. She does have an eating I mean, it's very clear that she has an eating disorder. You have a fucking a she bad is one. A, she is a very thin person. Maybe I'll, she has a tapeworm. But I'll, Pull the tapeworm out of your ass. I actually ass. pulled up her, her like pictures from like when she first got Instagram. It was like 2011, and it's, it clearly demonstrates that she was never she was not this thin. It so, like she was just always this thin. Mm -hmm. Cooney has a popular YouTube channel where she discusses... Who cares what she fucking discusses? No one really tunes in for that. Let's yeah, and... Uh, oh, I watched a couple of her videos for research and Blah! excuse me sorry my bulimia is acting I watched up. I watched <laughs> I watched a couple of her videos she just rambles endlessly kind of like us but um there's really nothing to her videos like That's no one scary. no one's tuning in for that reason they're tuning in to kind of go like look at this thick woman 
I mean, it's pretty obvious. That's why people, they're, they're coming to look at the car crash. Is she holding the phone like that because she wants the angle? Or is it because her arm and wrist can't support the weight of that phone? What the hell was that, TJ? Yeah, dude. She does look like Jack Skellington. In a she looks like a fucking skeleton. Ah, look at her. She's not even a fucking person. This is just a skeleton. And someone put some so fucking... Ah, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, <laughs> man. I think this is... Um, apparently, no. I think she had a, a, a video removed or something because there was a, a nip slip. Uh, if you go back a little bit, it might be a talk about it there. What did it say? Um, a nip slip. Yeah, uh, in 2016, uh, change.org banned something. So basically, they created a, p- a petition to have removed. Uh, that basically wrote, she knows that she's influencing young teenage girls into thinking that 60 pounds is normal. It's most definitely not. Ever since she had moved out of her mother's house recently, she's been getting skinnier and skinnier. This clearly isn't a, quote, high metabolism or any other losing body weight, uh, 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 of any type of uh, losing body weight uh, uncontrollably condition. So maybe she doesn't have some condition. She doesn't have cancer. She doesn't have some reason why, you know, she's losing no tapeworm. this weight. tapeworm. I don't think she has a tapeworm. Uh, Cooney addressed the controversy in a video. Some people are saying I'm, like, a bad influence on girls. I just want you guys to, like... To know, like, I seriously have never tried to be a bad influence on YouTube or to influence anyone badly. I would never want to do that. I've never told anyone to try to lose weight or to try to, like, change the way they look or to look like me. So it's basically saying I'm not influencing you. I'm just this how I am. Yeah. If uh, it has an impact on you, it's, that's basically even if, even if Even if people did look at her and say, yeah, I want to be like that, that's whatever because... You know, people could do that with anybody. You could do that with someone 600 pounds. People could do that with someone who's an alcoholic. Yeah, people look at The s- Rock. He's too ripped. Yeah, I mean, like... Negative body image for me. Yeah, I mean, you could say this about any fucking buddy and their problems. I mean, it's like a... It's classified as an illness, right? So, I mean, like, yes. you're going to try to kick her off of YouTube because she's sick? Fuck that. Keep scrolling. Uh, so, think- the petition was taken down by uh, Chase. So, Cooney was recently actually. banned from Twitch after a nip slip violated the site's community... St- oh... Twitch can't show your nips on Twitch. I don't. I mean, it sounded like it was an accident, so mm. whatever. <clears throat> so on Nip July, slip. so on July 29th, Cooney had a video removed by YouTube and a strike placed against her account. She seemed oblivious to why YouTube took action. So you want to read that, TJ? Uh, so it turns out I now have a strike on my channel. My video got removed, uh, and all it was was an outfit haul. Really upset because I didn't mean to do anything wrong. So someone responding to her now. No idea. Please, can you be honest? I, yourself, and your fans. The video was taken down because you're dying. Your body is that of a horribly sick person in desperate need of medical treatment. That image can't be allowed on YouTube. Promote anorexia. Just stop. You need help. Well, that isn't why they did it, though. So, you're wrong. And, of course, YouTube... YouTube later re-uploaded the video, but the company should take responsibility for giving her channel uh, a channel to promote a dangerous lifestyle. Well, she claims she doesn't promote eating disorders. There are countless girls who wish to be like yeah, her. Yeah, they want to be like her whether she was on YouTube or not. There's already people who are into this. Yeah. Anorexia was... She didn't create anorexia, you know? If there's people out there that look at this and say, I want to be an emaciated, horrible, living, nightmare, skeleton person <laughs> too. That's their fucking business. I, I mean, that's pretty much how I feel about it at the same time. It's like, so how can you tell someone, like, look, no one, if she was actually... Free country last I checked, it, faggots. It, unless she's actively promoting that lifestyle, I mean, just by existing is not a promotion of a lifestyle. Even if she was, it's her right to do it. Fuck that. I don't care. Well, I, I think at that point, YouTube probably would remove her shit. Well, they probably would, but I still wouldn't agree with it. No, I, I don't really agree with it either. I mean, I don't think she's living a healthy lifestyle, and I think she's lying about obviously having... An That'd be like disorder. if I make a video where I eat some Oreos well, she or something, is, and people are like, you encourage she, obesity, I you're think, banned. I think it's at least bare saying that she is being disingenuous. She clearly has an eating disorder. <laughs> I mean, that's, that, that's, that's clear. But like I said, it, it is a mental illness, so she's probably not able to see it that way. Maybe she had the thinner curse, dude. I, I just hate this, like, it's a bad influence on children argument, no matter where it pops oh, up its head. You because you know what, dude? My answer to that is always, there is no influence on children greater than their parents. So mm-hmm. 
if you're doing your job right, then me talking shit or being pro Anna or whatever the fuck shouldn't matter to your child because they have a far greater, <coughs> far more healthy influence at home, right? <laughs> if not, then get to work, asshole. Yeah, it's kind of your job. <laughs> All right, so here she is talking about her weight, I guess. Yep. This looks like it was before she got... Like, I don't know. This is it pretty... might just be the fact that her are bones so are covered up. Is it a medical condition? Um, no, it's not like a medical condition. People, like, I don't know, say I, I've said a lot of things or, like, I don't know. People, like, tend to want to, like, talk about why they think I look, like, too skinny in their opinion or I don't even know why people... Like to discuss how I look. Well, there so you go. I mean, it's it's a total dodge of the question. Because you look like a because fucking skeleton. Do. Yeah, it's a total dodge. Because you have no flesh. It's like well, she's being dishonest because it's like it's not, she's not acknowledging like, hey, why would people constantly ask you about this? They're asking about you because obviously there's something. It looks like you have a disease or you're anorexic and you have an eating disorder. So it's a logical question. And Ever. I I look, I know there's a bunch of annoying, moralizing assholes on the internet that want to basically talk down to people and tell them how to live their life and what advice to give. But you're just a clear-cut case where you're, there's clearly something going on and you actually do need help. But whether you get that help or not is entirely up to you. So I mean, if you want to kill yourself, I guess at some point you just have to let the train just fucking r run off the rails, you know? What else can you do? I Going so. off the rails on a skinny train. But, no, I'm just kind of naturally like that, I guess. So. No, it's no, you're not, not natural. And we're going to no. look at pictures from no, you're her, not. No, you're uh, not. from here several years ago, and we're going to show. All so. right, so, yeah, let's let's see that claim. So this so, is, like, early on, I guess. Yes. So this is when. So she naturally, this is a 2011. 2011. So she's naturally skinny. She's really skinny. She is a skinny person. And you can still kind of see the bone outline, but she looks at least like a fucking human. All right? So let's see. Here she is. And yeah, her face is much fuller. Like you can like her arms are still really fucking scrawny, but she's a naturally very thin person. She just yeah, she just looks like a skinny fucking girl. I mean, probably could even at this point stand to gain a little bit of weight, but then as yeah, we go but like up, you go, we go up further or... up, you go. I'm sure it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Jesus, how many fucking time? How many pictures of yourself you got? A lot. Ugh. I mean, to the. Ah, I mean, she, she's naturally this skinny. Oh, to her. God, I can't. Oh, I just can't even look. No one is naturally this skinny. I'm sorry. Oh, you look like. Oh, my God. No, no, no. You no, look no, like no, a, no, a child no, no. in Sub Saharan Africa that's starving to death. Yeah. No, because they have like distended bellies. <laughs> I mean, the, fa the fact that someone is basically doing this, and like, you saw, like, so over this time period. I mean, it's just like, no, you, this isn't how you naturally look. You're obviously on a super rich calorie restrictive diet and exercise plan. This is so unhealthy. You, I, you literally looks like you're a skeleton. I mean, you, she literally looks like she's a skeleton. Yeah, I mean, there's like, there's not even any muscle on her bones anymore. It's just bone. It's just, yeah, with a layer of skin. And then like, it even looks like she's putting on... Like her makeup looks smeared and shit, like her lipstick almost. She can't even, she doesn't have enough muscle to fucking bring it up. Into, <laughs> she's just barely able to put the lipstick on I, anymore. And, her, and for her to sit around and tell people, like, I don't know why people are talking about this. I don't know why it's even, it's like because no one else looks like this unless they're starving to death. Oh. Literally, the only other, the only, only analog or reference that people have is other people with anorexia that look like this. And people are literally in countries where they're starving to death. That's it. I mean, so to question that, the veracity of, the, of that questioning is just kind of absurd. Like I said, I mean, this is obviously someone who is mentally ill. There's no other way to look at it. And I understand why people are concerned, but at the same time, it's like, you know, social media gives you a gateway into someone's life, but it doesn't give you control over their life or their decisions. Gross. Anna's <sighs> Anna Tumblr. Oh, time for Tumblr. So those are some Anna tips. Pro Anna girl things. So these are tips. These are some. Oh, but these are rules, dude. Rules. Rules, rules, rules. This is important. You need to set rules for yourself. And if you are truly Anna, you will have no problem sticking to them because you are strong. Rules are everything. Examples. I, don't eat anything white. I, I, that's kind of racist. Do not under any circumstances eat after six. The other group was even stricter. They said five. Don't eat before three. Jesus, when can you eat? Three hours. Yeah, yeah, three, three hours. Six. Cut each bite into X amount of pieces. Chew X amount of times. Do not eat anything that's over three grams of fat. 
make your own and keep adding uh, adding to them. So you got to keep making more and more rules up. Uh, Anna must be the center of your life. Number one. So like, so actually, I'm oh, sorry, number two. Number two. Nothing else in your life matters. Your anorexia is number one. Remember that. You go to bed, anorexia. You wake up, anorexia. Drink a full glass of water before you eat and then sip a full glass between bites. You'll get full much faster. Remember, it takes 20 minutes for the brain to realize the stomach is full. So you got to be aware of that. So you got to fucking make sure you take a big old sip, take your tiny bite, chew that a number, your X number of times. So there's already a lot of fucking rules. Like, I just eat food. So already this is making my life way more complicated, but let's just keep going. Eat denser food because it feels like more. <laughs> Light and fluffy foods can pack in your digestive tract and you'll feel hungry soon after. Number four, take only the amount of food you plan to eat and don't allow seconds. Jesus, God, this they're is just, They're just like rule happy. Think before you eat. Don't eat while distracted. 100 calorie meals is better than one... Uh, four 100 oh, calorie meals is better guys, than one 400 calorie meal. Guess how many rules there are. Just keep going. Never eat anything bigger than about a cup. Slim fast, other healthy bars and shakes oh, have going. more carbs and calories than the meals they're intended to replace. Going. Drink at least a glass of water every four hours. Drink a shot of apple cider vinegar before eating. Blah, 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 blah. 54 rules. The 54 rules of anorexia club. And they encourage you to add more and more rules as they go. Add your own new rules. These rules are even, not even enough rules. Didn't they learn from Fight Club? Like, <laughs> keep it keep it simple. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's they not- need, like, the Anoraxia Ten Commandments. You know? Narrow it down to ten key rules. I think the Ten Commandments are too long, I'll, I'd honestly. I'd say five, the Five Commandments would be better. I, I'd say the One Commandment. Damn, Paul, can, you're a just, real simplistic. Well, you can don't do- be an asshole. How's that? Or you can uh, just fuck that. You can go with the Alice, Alistair uh, Crowley. Do uh, what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. <laughs> cool, dude. Anarchy, so, man. It's anarchy in the UK, <laughs> bitch. I got, I'm down with it. Let's do it. Ugh. These pro Anna people are skeevy. Uh, what is Need. this? Need. Need. Another pro Anna blog. Is this a poem? When I was five, my dad protected me from the monsters under my bed. When I was 10, my mom protected me from the ghosts of the outside world. When I was 15, my psychiatrist protected me from the demons in my head. Now, now I need Anna to protect me from the calories and food. Now I need Anna to protect me from the fat and desserts. Now I need Anna to protect me from the carbs in everyday life. Now I just need Anna. Now and forever. 150 notes on the two. <laughs> so this isn't just going into the void. No one gives a shit. You crazy bitch. There's a lot of people that identify with this and are going, yep. Anna that's is my father. That, Anna is my mother. Anna is my psychiatrist. I need only Anna. And when we talked about these communities earlier, that, I mean, this is what they do. It just reinforces these behaviors. Dude, you the know what we should do? of emaciation. I think I, I got a plan, Scotty. Tell me what you think of this plan. All you right. know, you're just talking about these emaciated people in Africa before. Send these bitches over there. For every one of those we send over, we bring one emaciated African over here. And let him fucking lead his way to the buffet. Why not? Yeah. That, th- that sounds fair to me, dude. They want no food. Africa's got tons of no food. And Africans want food. Yeah. We got food. So there everybody you. wins. Send all these Anna bitches over to fucking Africa where they can starve and be happy. And bring all those starving Africans over here where they can go to fucking, you know, Golden Corral or whatever. <laughs> and be happy themselves. <laughs> I mean... Maybe if I got progressive solutions for the I mean, real uh, problems that plague that'd America. Be, that'd dude. be if like you didn't look into the fact that it's a uh, devastating mental illness. Eh. What's I mean, this? I love Natalia Taylor. She's my ultimate thin spo. Ugh. So they idolize these in- Instagrammers and other people. who are I have no people. words to describe her. Just perfect. And then, of course, the thinner you are, the more perfect you are. You're not a dog. Don't reward yourself with food. Food Journal 31016. Today was the first day of my diet. It went well. I am proud of myself. I ate 240 calories. I burned 240 calories. That's a total of zero calories for today. That's well, not good. Actually, with your basal <laughs> metabolic rate, you probably burned. Yeah, probably more than that. But that's not good. You yeah. don't. Calories are the energy that powers your body. So. Like, how do you think that seems like a good fucking idea? I mean, it seems like a lot of these 
girls make their living lounging around and just taking selfies of themselves, so you don't need a whole lot of juice for that. Probably. But they're, they're addicted to exercise, though. Damn fucking oh, phones TJ. ringing and shit. Damn, TJ. Boo. Yeah, the whole world needs to get a hold of us when we're doing a show. I never get a call outside this show. Yep. Dude, I swear that happens to me so many fucking times, dude. It's just like, it's like clockwork. No one ever calls me until I'm doing a show. So you want to move Full on to, journal. To the I'm, next one, TJ? What's this? Five tips to hide your eating disorder. Okay, sounds healthy. How about this? Eat a hamburger so you don't look like a skeleton. Today is a fun video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. wait. This, what? Good. That's not a fun video. How to hide your eating disorder from those around you, which, by the way, you're never going to do it because you look fucking skeletal. It's never going to work. Never. I realized that if you Go buy a fat suit, suit, maybe. You're going about this all the wrong way. If you don't want people to know. Like, if you're one of like those people who are like, oh, you know what? I want you to know that I'm not quite eating all the time. Then don't watch this video. Just mosey along. About your business and... Not quite eating all the time. What a generous I don't description. quite eat very much, ever. That's a very generous description of anorexia. Here's what you do. Eat. Stop doing it. Go eat yourself a I fucking mean, Salisbury steak or something. It's such a compulsion for these people, though. It's not just a matter of them eating. There's other traumatic issues usually mm. in their lives that really prevent them from just seeing it in a, 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 an honest and critical examination. But <coughs> you got to crank this one up, TJ. One. But you don't want to be All harassed right. about it, and you need some help. So you don't want people to question There's why a tips you're interested. There's and tricks to keep people off your ass about it. as loud as it's going to get. And hopefully knowing, like, not knowing you have one. Um, tip number one, and this is important. When somebody asks you or say, Oh God, you're you're a little thin. Go ten pounds up. But what I mean by that is, if say I weigh 108 pounds, I'm going to tell them, oh thanks, but I'm actually like 118, 120. Add ten pounds to you. That's dumb. <laughs> yeah, just say you weigh more. <laughs> just, just lie about your weight. What kind of tip is that? I guess it's. I guess a lot of men do like to lie about their weight. I guess this works if you're surrounded by nothing but blind people. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You have you, your weight. What? Okay. Well, when we shook hands, your wrist felt thin. How much do you weigh? About one twenty. Because if you're fucking weighing eighty pounds, nobody's gonna buy one twenty. Because it's not enough that people will not believe you, but it's enough to still make your weight sound healthy. Uh, all right. Uh, so that one's really Whoa. helpful. Yeah. Oh, how helpful. Number two, eat normal. Now, it's going to sound crazy, but if you no, have it doesn't. to eat in a public setting, really try hard, A, not to cut your food up into itty-bitty little pieces, two, just like, don't don't be weird. You know what I mean? A, <laughs> don't be weird. Know what I mean? Yeah, you have to eat like a normal human. So like when you go out to eat with your friends or you eat with your family at the dinner table, like act normal about the food, but just, you know, yeah, you know, you have to. You like, can yeah. always puke it up later. Is this a troll? I, I thought know. she was, but she's made a bunch of videos. Uh, okay. So. Don't stare off into space when you're eating something you know you're not supposed to because that draws attention. So kind of what I do is I'll get a big glass of water, right? And I'll be drinking water and talking a lot. And then I just kind of move my food around. I eat it or I chew a lot of it. And I always start with like vegetables or fruit and then work my way to really clean proteins. And then I never have to touch like carbs or anything if I have to eat in a public setting. Um... She's talking about how, like, staring in a certain direction while you eat food calls attention. No. You know what calls attention? Looking like a walking fucking skeleton. That's what's call calling attention to your problem, and there's no way to hide that. Yeah, I've never been sitting around with somebody and it's like, 
hey, wait a minute. They looked in the wrong direction when we were eating. I think they got an eating disorder. Yeah, no, it's the fucking fact that you literally look like a science class skeleton hanging there on a rack for students to examine. That's what's causing causing attention to you. Bitch got more ribs than Tony Roma. All right. So eating disorder statistics. Um, whew, general statistics. At least 30 million people of all ages and genders suffer from an eating disorder in the U.S. All right. I mean, 30 so, million. so that was a shocking uh, thing that I learned. That was like, like 10%-ish. So um, it's very common. Every 62 minutes, at least one person dies as a direct result of an eating disorder. Okay. So about every hour, somebody d- is dead. Uh, eating disorders have the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. Hmm. Good to know. 13% of women over 50 uh, engage in eating disorder behaviors. All right. In a large national study of college students, 3.5 sexual minority women and 2.1% of sexual minority men report having an eating disorder. All right. 16% Sixteen percent of transgender college students reported having an eating disorder. Man, the problems just pile up for you guys, huh? Uh, I know. So talk about anorexia. So in a study following active duty military personnel over time, five point five percent of women and four percent of men had an eating disorder at the beginning of the study, and within just a few years of continued service, three point three percent more women and two point six percent more men developed an eating disorder. Eating disorders affect all races and ethnic groups. Genetics, environmental factors, and personality traits all combine to create a risk of an eating disorder. Is being fat an eating disorder? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It can be one, yeah. Like compulsive eating. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so here's a, a, a bunch of them. Okay, so anorexia. So, anorexia. so that's 0.9% of the uh, American women, I guess. One in five it's anorexia deaths is by suicide, so they like killing themselves too. Uh, that's, that, uh, so that's a big thing about it too. Is a lot of people assume these people just die because they just don't eat enough, and it's, it's like no, a lot of them actually take their own lives. Well, wait a minute though, wouldn't that be the same thing? If they died from their disease, wouldn't that be? Or w- if they died from not eating, wouldn't that be suicide? Um, I don't know if they technically well, I, call they, it. That, I, I guess they consider it from what I read most times that's considered like natural causes still even though you're it's because of it, it is a I mean it is a direct impact from that but you're not, that's not their, their goal is not to kill themselves by being uh, anorexic. Yeah it says uh, 50 about people that intentionally like harm themselves like they swallow prescription pills or doing they do something that is just related right you know to that uh, I guess more of a tangential way. Uh, so it says that uh, 58% of the risk for anorexia and bulimia is genetic. Uh, 33 to 50 percent of anorexia patients have a comorbid mood disorder, such as depression. Yeah. Um, about half of anorexia patients have comorbid anxiety disorders, including obsessive compulsive disorder and social social phobia. Um, so then they have bulimia. 1.5 percent of American women suffer from uh, bulimia in their lifetime at some point. Um, SMR for bulimia nervosa is 1.93. Yeah, I'm not sure what that stands for. It's, stand, it's standardized mortality rate. Okay. Which is uh, a ratio between the observed number of deaths in a study population and the number of deaths uh, that would be expected. So anorexia nervosa has a 5.86. So that's higher than the uh, bulimia one. Uh, but we're not here talking about bulimia, really. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at the other ones. Yeah, uh, binge eating binge disorder. Eating disorder. Um, other specified feeding or eating disorders. Blah, so a lot blah, of these come other things, like you said, like uh, avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. So all these are uh, di- uh, diabulimia. So I think it's um, diabulimia. It's important to know that a lot of these are actually like like they say comorbid. So it's like they have anxiety, they have depression, they have other you know mental illness going on in ta- in tandem with their eating disorder. Mm. And like I said, a lot of these people unfortunately take their own lives as well i mean that's a, that's another facet of this that's not just the people having these totally unhealthy lifestyles that they have these also they're mentally unhealthy as well as physically unhealthy and that's it's almost like that's like the manifestation of their mental health is their appearance you know what i mean yeah yeah i mean if you decide to eat s- fucking six bites of food a day you know then <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying like yeah, you this, probably got something yeah. wrong uh, Dallas dad shines light on uh, eating disorders after his daughter's death. And so. she died of natural causes. We'll see here. Let's see. Disorders often live in the shadows, silently taking more lives than many other mental illnesses out there. A Dallas father today is talking about the challenge, and he's doing it 
by shining a light on his own daughter's journey. Gilma Avalos has the story. His all new at five daughter's five. journey to death? After yeah, 32 journey to the coffin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, don't wear a bow tie. He's a lawyer. Here, Stephen Dunn has walked away from a successful law career. His true life purpose he hasn't walked away from the wardrobe. 11.31 p.m. on a Sunday, October 30th, 2016. When he lost his 23-year-old daughter, Morgan, to anorexia. She referred to us as, as twins. She was this incredible, outgoing, uh, gregarious person. He wrote that fucking bow tie. The fucking the psychological long, disorder did more than reduce her size. She weighed only 84 pounds when she was diagnosed with a leaking heart valve. Once this disease sinks its claws into you, it... Lux luckily, he doesn't suffer from it. <laughs> so no, he, he strips doesn't suffer. Away your How do you identity. know? It strips away who you are. Through her six-year battle, Morgan managed to help to others you. struggling with the disease. And in her journal, she uh, wrote... I seem to be able to help everyone else. I just can't save myself. Eating disorders have the highest mortality rate. Dunn has started a Texas chapter of Project Heal, a nonprofit that helps victims who can't afford treatment. He's also dedicated to rape. Just take him to a fucking Popeyes or something. I don't. Like, what treatment do you need? Just no, that chicken from Popeyes. This is America. It's not exactly hard to find food to get fat on. Yeah, but yet again, I mean, you're just you're just seeing it as like I don't want to eat because I just don't want to eat. It's not. It's a lot more complex than just simply not wanting to eat. Yeah, well, just fucking bring them. Get these motherfuckers at a, in a fucking uh, McDonald's. And be like, here's a super hey, size Paul, fry. Eat you, that shit. Are you shit. depressed? Watch a comedy. Aren't you better now? <laughs> I mean, come Don't on. you feel better, buddy? They just need to physically do it, whether Pluck they like up. it or not. <laughs> Put a smile I'll, I'll on your face. I'll tell you what. Every anorexic person just hire some fucking hire some fat person to hang out with them and oh. make them eat food. Fake it till you make it. Ooh, get them some of those feeder fetish people. You know, you know. This is takes, like a blank slate for them. Oh, it takes 147 up. muscles to smile and 710 muscles to frown. Wow, I didn't know. Whoa, I'm going to smile more from now on. I it's realize easier. how easy it is. Wait, how many muscles does it take to just have your face completely slack and unexpressive? None. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to go with that one, dude. Raising funds for brain research and ending the stigma that keeps this killer lurking in the shadow. You bring you bring it out into the light. It it's not fat enough to cost, cast a shadow. Can't live. He says it's crucial to understand eating disorders are not about food. It reflects what the symptoms are, but it doesn't reflect the root cause or, or, or how deadly it is. Speaking candidly to those walking a road he knows well. Research and understand the monster that has come into your ha house because you're in the fight of your life. It's bigger than you. He has started a foundation in Morgan's name dedicated to funding research, hoping to improve anorexia's recovery statistics. You should know Sunday kicks off National Eating Disorder Awareness Week. There Every morning, wake up and drink a fucking glass of Crisco. I love this like we... Instead of instead of actually doing something to solve yeah, the problem, a symposium. We, just, we give it a week. <laughs> a symposium. It's eating disorder week, and we're having a symposium. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, man. <sighs> Which god is it's that? It's just a fucking. It's a joke. Yeah, I, that's the worst. That's, that's why I, I hate the end of these, this story. Like, I, I I got to this part too, and I had the exact same thought. I'm like, what is this gonna do? Like, someone's Nothing. gonna fucking. Uh, some people are gonna go to a stuffy fucking campus and hear about how. Look, we're just we want to do more research and other causes. I mean, yeah, it's really great that they're researching it, but this the symposium isn't going to do shit. It's going to be like fifteen people there. Yeah, no one's going to give a fuck about this. It's not going to make an impact. And we've already shown these insular little communities where people are congregating online. That's that's not going to have any effect on that. And that's why I understand like the idea that people want to ban these communities. But look, like they have WhatsApp groups. There's always going to be a way when you have this means of communication where people can communicate instantaneously over the entire planet. I mean, how are you going to limit people from having these kind of conversations about anything? Like, look at Silk Road. People were selling drugs. People were selling murders. People, were, I mean, if you have this amazing tool, unless you just can completely control who accesses it and who is able to access it, this kind of stuff is going to naturally arise. There's going to be negative consequences and social impacts of mass communication. And this is just one of those. It's an offshoot. Where the fuck is Paul, Scotty? I don't fucking know, dude. He's Paul. Paul left the show. Oh, maybe he's purging, dude. Paul went to go purge. He oh, binged. God. He binged earlier, and now he's purging. He's purging, dude. He's purging. Bro. Okay, so purge. I got a new, I got another video here. I don't know what is this. Yeah. This is uh, Pippa that, McManus. 
Basically, the, uh, family not warned about suicide risk. Yep, so she committed suicide. You're not going to smile. This is her Admitted hospital. to hospital, dangerously underweight, and even connected to the machines on the ward, Pip McManus can't stop herself from exercising. Her parents released these images, a 13-year-old daughter in the grip of an eating disorder. Less than two years later, she'd taken her own life. I don't think she knew what was going on in her body. It was just... The, the anorexia had taken, taken over then. It was just... She was probably 10% Pip, 90% anorexia. She was... Her main concerns were food and exercise. And even in the, the hospital on the first admission, she was doing star jumps in the toilet. Nobody could stop her. In the Priory Hospital... I mean, no one can stop her. She's a fucking emaciated 13-year-old. Strap her to the fucking bed, put a funnel in her mouth, and pour some fucking gravy in that son of a bitch. <laughs> wow, TJ. <laughs> why, why has no doctor thought <laughs> yeah. of this brilliant Get, treatment? I don't know, because they're fucking stupid is why. So TJ wants to open up the fucking mental uh, health facilities of the 18th century. Yeah. Dunk them! Well, obviously <laughs> this shit Their didn't work. Their brain is flawed! Hit the, them on the head with a mallet Oh, so times. you guys are defending a method that led to her dying at the age of 15? I look at a certain point. It obviously didn't work. You have so. to respect people's freedom of choice, and as fucked up as it is, fuck that. It's like you smoking cigarettes. Should we come and grab yeah. them out of your hands every time we see them until you stop? You stop no, because cigarettes you. are perfectly healthy, unlike not eating. <laughs> yeah. No, they're not. No, fuck that. We should strap TJ a down to a table so he can't Manchester. get cigarettes. That's a good idea. In early teens, when an interest in healthy eating and exercise became an obsession, one her parents say spiraled out of control. She ended up being <laughs> healthy eating and exercise, not even once. Section and admitted to the specialist mental health facility near her home, but after being released under a community treatment order in December 2015, five days later, she was dead. Today, the jury at an inquest concluded that there was inadequate communication to Pip's parents on and prior to discharge of the statistically <coughs> increased risk of suicide in the first week. After the verdict, her mother struggled to contain her emotions. Pip spent her last three, three years fighting against anorexia, malnutrition, depression and self-harm. We believe the failings in our daughter's care from beginning to end resulted in her death. Okay, so wait, she had anorexia, depression, depression and self-harm, and you didn't have enough heads up she was a suicide risk? Come on. Well, I mean, what they're saying is that she was re the medical professionals released her from the facility. TJ's going with the lack of empathy angle tonight. <laughs> it's not, I'm not going. It's not an angle. I just stuff some bacon. What do you, down what do you mean, TJ? Throat. Do you think that her family, that their her family, did everything? Like, what they do you like? Because like, her family is sitting there saying, bl trying to blame the mental health professionals because they released her and they did never advise them of this. What do you mean? How, because how would they? You obviously know she's a, a high suicide risk at that point with that fucking yeah, trifecta. But the professionals of said she was okay to go home. They made that call. And this is what happened two days later. Yeah, I'm not saying that they should be held. You guys were just you were just championing freedom of choice a minute ago, and now you're complaining they let her go. Uh, I think that was probably a mistake. Yes. All right. So HIV and AIDS. AIDS IV. God, fucking TJ. It's hard not to come <laughs> slap you upside your head after doing this episode. Uh, let me let me guess, TJ. Is your reaction to everything in this one going to be like, oh, who cares about these dumbass motherfuckers? You don't want a condom. If I well, these people don't want to wear a condom. They want them can say, oh, yeah, AIDS is great. Kills more of these stupid fucks. Well, they, these people want AIDS. So why would they wear a condom? They want to spread it, too, don't they? Yeah, they want to they want to get it and they want to okay spread with it. that. So you know what it's called, Paul? You know what it's called the people trying to get AIDS? Bug chasing, it's right? It's bug chasing, dude. Bug so chasing. Bug chasing, also known as charging, is the practice. Why is it? Why isn't it char what charging? Why? It's slang is char. I'm not sure. Huh? Yeah, that's Wikipedia of the show. I don't know. This. Uh, <laughs> practice of pursuing sexual activity with HIV positive individuals in order to contract HIV. Individuals engaged in this activity are referred to as bug chasers. They're chasing the bug. I feel like you should call them something worse so that they're not. It, it doesn't sound as cute so, as it does. It is a form of self harm. No shit. Uh, bug chasers seek sexual partners who are HIV positive for the purpose of having unprotected sex. That's very important because a lot of these people are in what's called barebacking. Uh, become HIV positive. Gift givers are HIV positive individuals who comply with the bug chasers, bug chasers' efforts to become infected with HIV. 
Uh, another term you might hear uh, throughout this is pausing. Pausing? Uh, is a term that means to test positive for HIV. So people talk about, like, like I'm pause. Dude, uh, I finally paused! Yeah. Yes! I'm pausing, dude. Uh, bug chasers have indicated various reasons for this activity. Some bug chasers engage in activity for the excitement and intimacy inherent in pursuing such a dangerous activity, but do not implicitly desire to contract HIV. So, so they like playing with the risk. It's like factor. the risk thing. Some people consider bug chasing intensely erotic and the act of being infected through the uh, fuck of death. Fuck of death. Whoa. As the ultimate taboo, the most extreme sex act left. So it's like these are not people like, you know what, fucking someone. They're looking for that. I've done it all. This can fucking kill me, man. Yeah, the fucking fuck kill me. Of death. Fucked a train of 13 Peruvian midgets while hanging from a fucking <laughs> chandelier. Not enough. The last thing left. The last <laughs> frontier is getting AIDS. Uh, so. Others have suggested some people who feel lonely desire the nurturing community and social services that support people with HIV and AIDS. It has also been used as a form of suicide. So people are just like, I'm sick of this world. I'm going to get AIDS. Yes. <laughs> HIV AIDS. That pretty much sums up. What? So the gift such of a, HIV. That's such a slow, miserable, <laughs> not good method of suicide. Just shoot yourself you in get, the head. You want to get the gift of HIV, TJ? The gift that oh, yeah. keeps the on gift, giving. It does, doesn't it? It is the gift. So. When HIV is considered a gift. So we talked to well, HIV that tattoo positive is men not a gift. about why some Danes are purposefully Contracting the virus. Danes? Like Danish people? The what Danes. The going on here? It's the Danes, TJ. This tattoo is horrible. Uh, today, it's quite hard to tell precisely how many people are infected with the highly contagious disease. Some estimate that more than 40 million are infected with the HIV virus. Uh, despite the terrifying statistics surrounding the virus, a new tendency has seen the light of day within some Danish homosexual subcultures where people are deliberately looking to get themselves infected with HIV by a so-called gift giver, the phenomenon is known as bug chasing. Uh, the idea being that it's the ultimate sexual taboo, blah, blah, we already went yeah, over this. We know about that. Um, I asked the director of the Copenhagen HIV program, uh, Jens, or maybe Jens. Yes. Jens, I am Jens. Jens Lundgren. Yes. Uh, about super infections. He explains that most of the HIV viruses that circulate worldwide are receptive to the preparations that are available. Uh, there has, though, been incidents where the virus has become resistant to components of the treatment. If such a patient passes on the infection, the newly infected person will also be immune to the same treatments as the donor. Uh-oh. There have been accounts where the person infected the first time was fully receptive to medicate. You know, we should just start calling these the, the these people. Fuck bug chasers. They should just be called extreme anti-vaxxers. They're not just running the risk of getting the disease. They're actively looking for it, basically. Um Bug chasing thrives on internet dating forums like barebackcity.info and homospotdk. Here, bug chasers can meet and search for gift givers and conversion parties. The fuck's a conversion uh, party? That is where people, uh, like, for example, like I read one where someone basically, they got a motel room, mm -hmm. they plan the party, and then the guys will literally just come in and fuck them bareback. Like, 10 guys right. might come in and fuck them. And it's oh, like, okay. it, trying to convert them and make them positive. Uh, what makes this dating site different from the ones you already know is forum topics like penis amputation, cum collector, fisting. <laughs> is it difficult? Well, yeah, it's a fist in your ass. Profiles on the site usually uh, feature the usual specs like age, height, interests, and so forth. However, they also include stuff like length, girth, whether or not you're HIV positive, and whether or not you care. Here I came into contact with the HIV-positive Martin Wickman. He's been an active member of the Danish bareback fetish scene since he was 27 and agreed to help us shed some light on the subject. Dude, bug, ch bug chasing's a decent name for it. Your name was stupid, TJ. Okay. You gotta come up with a better name. I, th I feel like the, 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 it's like an outgrowth of the anti-vaxxer thing, though. Because they like getting diseases. These guys like getting diseases. They just have a, a fucking hard on for this one particular. They, yeah, they want to get fucking HIV positive. They got a yeah. fucking boner for it. They're like, you know what? I want. I want to commit slow suicide. I want to fucking get infected. Bug um, chase is not good. You know how vaxxers are called vaxxers. Yeah. These guys like to have bareback sex, so we could call them barebacksers. Ah. 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 All right. So, how prevalent is bug chasing in Denmark? Okay. 
Uh, it's much more widespread than you would think. I usually see it on homospot.dk. Where people oh, call me, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Let me take. Yeah, this write note. that on yeah. down, Paul. I'm gonna take this note. Real where quick. people call themselves Jude something Law. to do with bug DK. chasing. Yeah, Jude Law. Do you think Jude Law has AIDS? Maybe he does. Oh my God! Uh, if I could get the death fuck from Jude Law, <laughs> I would just die. Jude AIDS. Law, death fuck. Yeah, dude. All right, the fuck uh, of death from Jude Law, dude. Um. The other day, I saw a 13-year-old on the chat room. He was quickly thrown off. I find it very worrying that high school students have unprotected sex to the extent, to that extent. They didn't live in the 80s, and they don't have the same level of information about the risks, and that's a big problem. Luckily, the guy that manages Homo Spot links to information about STDs. Yeah, which doesn't seem like it helps. Yeah, everyone's going there for that. They're all going there to get fucking laid. They don't give a fuck about the STD information on the fucking sidebar. Homo spot, dude. Homo spot. Let's go through homo spot. I'm going to go chill at the homo spot. Shoot your ads in my asshole. <laughs> Ooh, cum collector sub forum. Let's see what that's about. What role do these chat rooms play in bug chasing? You can be whoever you like online because you're hidden behind your screen up until the actual physical contact. But the really dangerous people are the ones who don't know their HIV status. There are some who deliberately keep their status a secret because it's a turn on for them to pass on the virus. They feel like a part of them is inside another person. And being infected is not so terrible because the medicine is so good at keeping you alive. Online, you can also encounter folks who are willing, uh, who are willing pay to have sex with people who have HIV. They pay between 500 and 1,000 kroner. And that's uh, and it's it's a it's not a problem finding a donor. <coughs> Wait a minute. Hold. Find a kroner donor for your HIV boner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pay me five hundred kroner and you'll get my boner. Yeah. Um. I'm in the wrong line of work, man. I gotta get me some AIDS. Get and you move some to AIDS. Denmark. You can just tell people you have AIDS. You don't even actually. Yeah. yeah you got it. Like, I got AIDS, dude. You got the AIDS now. Oh, it's all up in you. Yeah, all up in there. All up in there. Give the me fucked my, up thing give me is by him doing that, he might right. actually get AIDS. Well, no, because the people who are there, obviously, if they had AIDS, they a lot know. of them have, are having a lot of unprotected sex. That's they might, true. Might have They're AIDS trying then. really hard to so get Paul AIDS. So Paul fucks them. Then Paul gets AIDS by I'll lying. I'll cork about, my cock. Well, they, but, that, but you know what, Paul? You'll be good then, dude, because after I'll that, you <laughs> cork it off. Yeah, I'll, I'll put some like. You know, rubber cement down the tip of it or whatever before I fuck. I'll make sure it's all sealed <laughs> all off. All right. Sealed off. Be like, oh, yeah, there's a big load in there. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm, I'm clogged up again. Sorry. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Remember, it's like a fucking fire hydrant. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's so, just yeah, they just... Profile on Bareback they, City. They like getting AIDS. The sex roulette parties. Sex well, one roulette. one guest is secretly HIV positive. That's a fun twist, it's I guess. So one of you now has AIDS. Oh! Recent news reports have created a panic surrounding a supposed increase in the risky sex parties. We asked a sociologist and a doctor what's so appealing about the threat of infection. Uh, according to recent news reports, so-called sex roulette parties, or roulette if you prefer, roulette. in which uh, one person is secretly infected with HIV and nobody at the party is allowed to use a condom are allegedly on the rise. I mean, yeah, but... <laughs> I mean, they're probably on the rise from zero, so I don't know how common these are uh, across Spain. Spain. That's Spain. Who cares? Yeah, who gives a fuck what people are doing in Spain? <laughs> I mean, look, if they wipe themselves out. I don't out, care if the entire country of Spain gets AIDS and dies. I mean, dude, everyone's, like, pretty much everyone in Spain has, doesn't they have that gay lisp, dude, anyways? I mean, yeah. come on. They're all fucking faggots. Uh, mostly among gay men, but not exclusively. It sounds completely shocking, and it suggests, as Dr. Joseph Malolas of uh, Hospital Clinic Barcelona told the newspaper uh, El Peridi Periodico, uh, that people have lost respect for HIV. Partygoers have uh, been said to enjoy the thrill of not knowing whether they'd end up infected. However, it's not clear how big the risk actually is. Malolas uh, said some of his patients attend blue parties where attendees take antiretroviral medication like Truvada so it's like to reduce their risk of A lot of, of it's like cognitive dissonance like because they have methods that are pretty good at preventing people from getting HIV, which people will take before or after. So it's kind of like there's some risk, but the risk is actually pretty low in a lot of these cases. Yeah. Uh, in an email to Broadly, Malolas uh, acknowledged they didn't know exactly how big the phenomenon was. I really don't know how often it occurs because I only know of some anecdotal reports from some of my patients, he said. 
He also indicated that, contrary to what some outlets have claimed, the practice isn't contributing to a statistically significant rise of STDs treated by his hospital. So it doesn't seem like it's all that common, but I guess it is happening. It's not super common. But even if sex where that isn't happening on a significant scale, it's still befuddling that anyone would treat the prospect of HIV infection as a game. Why? Yeah, Why I mean, is that like, befuddling? Have you, you ever looked at the human race? Yeah. Like, yeah. Have you ever taken a good hard look? We at the treat human everything race? like a motherfucking game. It's it's but not befuddling, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, uh, we don't even care that we're destroying our own planet for fuck's sake. So yeah, like, hey, look, it's fucking snowing in the summer. Ah, oh, we're fine. Uh, they've exhausted a traditional sexual experience or even diverse and elaborate sex, like having an orgy or engaging in BDSM, he says. As a result, it can be thrilling for these people to have sex with someone who's HIV positive and not become infected. It reinforces the fact that you did something somewhat dangerous. Nothing bad happened, but it still felt good. So basically, these are just thrill seekers. like thrill chasers yeah. who are just bored with everything because they've reached that like pinnacle of debauchery where they're just like, I, I grow weary. And uh, so then they're like, I know. Yeah, like an armadillo fisted me last night. I need something a little more exciting. I've, I will risk contracting the HIV virus. But not really because I'm taking antiretroviral medication. So I'm probably going to so I fine. probably won't, but maybe Ooh, I will. The one in a million, you know, whatever. But some are actively chasing it. Well, some are trying, yeah. Uh, here's a CNN video, which is fake news, of course, so take it with a grain of salt. But this is from 2008, and this is about... Uh, a documentary called... I think it's called... Um, this is a... Yeah, this the is a... Gift. The bug... Ch- it says CNN interview bug chasers, so... Welcome back now. Believe it or not, there are actually some... <laughs> Fuck you, Anderson. We know you're a bug chaser, dude. Don't act like you're a not. fucking serious bug chaser, dude. You can't even fucking wash your pants. Some people who want to get the AIDS virus. The name on the street for some of these people is bug chasers, and the virus itself they call the gift. Is that word really on the street very on much? On the street. <laughs> Do you really, like, walk around on the street, no. man? Hey, man, you heard about these bug chases? You know? Yep. I hadn't heard about them until you told me about them, TJ. Yeah, I guess word was on my street. Well, you're a weirdo. I expect you to know the name of a new film that's getting a lot of attention. It's about a subject we are sure you may find uncomfortable, even shocking. But it's also a subject we should not ignore. Here's a short clip from The Gift. I have one friend uh, who is always like, I want to be like all you guys. You know, you all have it. I don't. What's wrong with me? You know, I want to go out there and get it. They want to be in the in crowd it definitely is not a gift to get it i would definitely be gifted if i didn't have it i have no desire to give this gift to anybody some people have even said you know oh i'll give you your dad joining me is the filmmaker who created directed the gift louise hogarth thanks for being with us this is incredibly disturbing probably a lot of people don't know about it why do some people and we and we stress this is a fringe group of people in the united states why do they want HIV. It's, it's a multi-level reasons. A lot of people, it's survivor guilt. They, well, the real question is, Anderson, why don't you want HIV? <laughs> Doesn't everyone want AIDS? She looks like a younger Sharon Osbourne. Having AIDS is the new not yeah. having AIDS. God, you're so lame, Anderson. Lost tons really? of friends. They've lost two or three lovers. They feel guilty that they're still alive. Other people just want to get the worry over. They don't want to worry about it. Because they think they're going to get it anyway. They might as well just get it over with. Yes. And other people want to belong to a community. They think there's this community out there that, and, mm-hmm. and, and they, in order to belong. To- there is a large barebacking community out there. Which are, they're not bug chasers or gift givers, but they are barebackers. Mm-hmm. And that's really why I made the film, to address the misperceptions that are in the community now that HIV is a livable illness. In the film, you, you follow a number of people. One of them, um, I haven't seen the film yet, but I've read a lot about it. One of them is a, a young man named Ken. I want to show you what happens. This is his reaction when he finds out he has, in fact, gotten HIV. Yes, which Let's is show a that. common reaction. I was expecting a positive reading, and it was. I was... The feeling, say I was relieved that I finally got it and I don't have to worry about do I have it, do I have it, do I have it? And if so, do I need to be careful? Not anymore. Happy. Relieved. I can breathe again. I mean, you look at this. Okay. Well, that's horrible. Do you horrible. say I can <laughs> breathe or yeah, I can I, breathe? <laughs> I, I can I breathe, breathe again. 
I, I like part where it's just like, no, I don't have to be careful anymore. Yeah, it's so great. Just like, now that I have a highly infectious, dangerous, deadly disease, I just... No more worry. My uh, worries are over. My worries are over. You know, it's thank God. God, after all these years of worrying about possibly getting cancer, it was such a relief to find out that <laughs> I'm riddled with it. <laughs> It just uh. it, it defies sense. I mean, and, and that's like a big thing that with, uh, I noticed with bug chasing. The more research I did, it was a lot of people were just like, talk about the relief they would feel like, oh, I'm going to be so relieved that I'm going to get this over with. I'm not, I'm not going to have to worry about this in my life anymore. And it's just, it's it's so irrational. But I mean, there's also people that spread it maliciously. We'll get to that too. There's also people that like, they almost use it as a weapon against you. Crazy. This and you say, is this kid just an idiot? I mean, is he just an idiot? But but there, are, I mean, expl can you explain it? He's not an idiot. He is. Um, he has a lot of misperceptions about what it means to get infected. Where do you think he gets those perceptions? Do you think there's something in the AIDS education as it has been thus far that is is sending out the wrong message? Definitely. That's the pro that's totally the problem, and that's why I've made this documentary. And what is the wrong message? What, it, what, what is the message that's being sent out in your opinion? That HIV is a livable illness, that it's not a problem to get it, that uh, we've made it so positive to be positive. In, in ads, it, in television, and in the like. Right. I want to show you another clip from this film. This is another uh, young man, Doug, who had a different reaction when he found that he was HIV positive. Let's, let's play it. From your film. I thought I was just yeah, a lot of promiscuous on tape size. <coughs> I didn't know it was going to change so fast. No one told me. No one told him? I mean, the, the message is out there. No, Doug was... Don't be unsympathetic, Anderson. You're a fucking prick, you Anderson. You fucking piece of shit. The message is out there. No one told him Anderson I mean, it's, explicitly. It's pretty obvious what side Anderson Cooper. He's just trying to address the criticism. You know what, you guys? The, the you guys are a bunch of fucking faggots. I hope you both get AIDS. Wow, TJ. How about how about a little tact? So All right, buddy. It's 2019. All right, so here you go. Here's uh, S Stephen Fry, HIV, and me. People want to get. It. I don't know. So this is, uh, someone basically tells him about people wanting to actually get AIDS. That all rather depressing, but little do I know that Gordon has saved the most worrying for last. He's known Mark for years and assures me that what I'm about to hear is true. I've got a friend, uh, he's been to a party in Nottingham uh, where there was a 19-year-old lad, he was negative and he wanted to be given the gift. The gift? They're called gift givers, people with HIV. Good and there were five positive guys who had sex with the negative lad to pause him up and um, pause him up yeah they all had sex with him unprotected to give him the gift he was pause my he bitch was up. he willingly so your friend was one of these five who one of the five who, who shagged him yeah and ca can you have any insight into Fucking british people shagged why him. he wanted he thought it was a badge of honor or i have no idea to be honest i mean a lot of lads these days a lot of lads like unprotected sex. Yeah, but of course, you know what happened at the end? What? Yeah, um, when they finished having sex with him, they inserted a butt plug into him to make sure that none of the semen came out of him to make sure that he definitely... My God. ...get every positive the... part. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a normal night at your house, TJ. That's why I had to pull this clip, just hearing Stephen Fry talk about... <laughs> five five lads <laughs> having their way with a HIV negative guy oh, okay. and then shoving a butt plug up his ass to make sure the AIDS wow. juice stays in. <laughs> make sure the AIDS juice seal all the AIDS come in there, dude. The AIDS juice. Uh, first, we fucked him with the pine cone to make sure there was lots of open wounds in there. <laughs> actually, uh, a lot of people I've heard that do this actually take a toothbrush and jam it up their ass and try to create abrasions. Oh, to, yeah. So it's trip. easier to yeah, make take, sure that. Wow. Oh, God. So how many people. What an episode. Are, uh, oh. Oh, sorry. Is that too soon? Yeah, okay. Well, uh, so how many people are uh, bug chasers and gift givers? Oh, Probably not very many, I'd imagine. So one of the best... <laughs> one the... more after this episode. <laughs> I want I want the you gift. Want, you want the gift, dude? <laughs> Paul yeah. wants the gift. He wants uh, to charge fucking a thousand kronar a fucking... Yeah. A gift. 
Sounds, almost sounds like Paul's like a Cleon now, dude. He's like, a thousand Kronar, and I will give you the gift. Cleons <laughs> uh, with AIDS. So one. Like <laughs> with AIDS. <laughs> I have AIDS. Oh. HIV oh. ons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the- <laughs> I'm sorry. I was imagining Worf getting diagnosed with fucking HIV. <laughs> I'm sorry, Worf, you have <laughs> I've been paused. <laughs> Grisnach! <laughs> Kapla! <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, Let's all right, imagine right, right, Worf right. with HIV, dude. Like, don't do it, don't do it. All right. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to, man. I'm oh. trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, one of the best and most interesting papers published on bug chasers and gift givers was published a few years ago, an issue of journal AIDS Education and Prevention <coughs> by Dr. Christian Grove and Dr. Jeffrey Parsons. The research examined the online profiles of over a thousand bug chasers and gift givers, classified such people into one of six types. These comprise uh, committed bug chasers, that's 7.5% uh, of the total sample, this comprised men who were an HIV negative but actively seeking HIV positive partners. Opportunistic bug chasers, 12.1%. This comprised men who were HIV negative but were not bothered by the, about the HIV status of their prospective partner. So they just don't give a shit. They're just like, eh, I don't care. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, you don't. I'm not really fucking concerned. Uh, then we have committed gift givers, 0.4%. This type comprised men who are HIV positive and sought out HIV negative partners. So these are people who are 0. F- <coughs> they're a very small percentage. No, they're very small. Opportunistic gift givers, uh, this type comprised men who are HIV 26%. positive. 26%. <laughs> or not bothered by, about their HIV status of their prospective partners. So like, they had it, and it's like, look, if you have it or don't, I'm, we're, not, we're not even talking about it. You might just So there's a lot of dudes that have AIDS, but they're just like, yeah, I'll fucking give you AIDS. I don't give a shit. And then we have, um, but then there's only, there's like, it's a very small number that are like, yeah, I actively want you to get AIDS. You son of a bitch. Only 0.4 of the people right. that, of the profile. So, uh, I think it's called Cero sorters. This comprised men whose description of being a bug chaser or gift giver did not match their intentions and were seeking partners of equal HIV status. For instance, some HIV positive men, 8.5%, sought other HIV positive men, whereas some HIV negative men, 12.5%, sought other HIV negative men. So they're not even, they're not even really in this. Yeah. They're just kind of phonies. Yeah, they're just kind of, they're kind of yeah, they're just kind of the phonies of the group. They're kind of like, this is interesting. And then you have, excuse me, ambiguous bug chasers or gift givers. This type comprised men who did not know their HIV status. Therefore, it was not determined whether these men were bug chasers or gift givers. So they, just, no one, they don't know. Okay. So that's kind of some of the numbers. So very few committed gift givers out there. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, so more people actually want it. So like, it seems like the demand for gift givers. Yeah, the demand for AIDS <laughs> exceeds the, the supply. supply. Yeah, okay. it really does. Or HIV. You get that or first. HIV, excuse yeah. me, yes. Yeah, so HIV. So not if I get it, it won't. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, no, Paul. If you if you get it, dude, you're fucked, dude. <clears throat> so the next one is uh, the story you pulled up before. So a UK man gets life in prison for deliberately spreading HIV. Okay. Kind of a dick, dude. A hairdresser from Brighton, England. I'm sorry. I know that. Bry Shortington. Yeah, I have to pronounce that wrong. Uh, I'm gonna call it Brigham. <laughs> <laughs> a hairdresser from Brigham, England, is the first person in that country to be found guilty of intentionally infecting others with HIV. Reports the Guardian. Daryl Rowe, 27, has been sentenced to life in prison for transmitting HIV to five men, referred to as causing grievous uh, body harm with, uh, with, intent, with intent, and uh, for attempt to infect five others. Rome was diagnosed with HIV in April of 2015, but ignored the advice of doctors and refused treatment. He then began meeting men on the gay hookup app Grinder so he could infect them, according to information from the trial and reported by the newspaper. He would lie about his status and try to pressure them into having condomless sex. Other times, he tricked men by wearing a condom that he had int- intentionally ripped. Afterward, he would taunt the men via text. Damn. Uh, this dude was fucking hard. So he was... He wasn't, when I read this shit, dude, this dude was fucking This dude hardcore. was like, he'd, he'd fuck you, and he'd be like, You got AIDS now, bitch. Yeah, bitch, I gave you the yeah, fucking little bug. Yeah, I done gave you the AIDS. A true Klingon. <laughs> it's a good day to die. Remember uh, when my condom broke and I came in your cup? Ah, 
<laughs> well, I gave you the AIDS. <laughs> you have AIDS now. You have AIDS. He said that a few weeks after the sexual encounter in which they used the condom, he became sick and eventually got tested for HIV. He told the health advisor after sex, Roe told him he ripped the condom and it was just the laughter. There was this menace in his voice that he was happy at what he did. <laughs> 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 you have HIV. Oh, hey. I've given you my HIV. Take your <laughs> gift. Uh, the health advisor told me he's seen uh, sort of similar cases. Uh, after the sentencing, Judge Christine Henson said to Roe, you are the first individual to be sentenced for Section 18 offenses in the context of infecting others with HIV, reports The Guardian. With the full knowledge of the risk you pose to others and the legal implications of engaging in risky sexual practices, you embarked on a deliberate campaign to infect other men with the HIV virus. Given the facts of this case and your permissive predatory behavior, I cannot see uh, when you would no longer be a danger to gay men. True. It's important to note HIV-positive people who maintain an undetectable viral load have effectively no risk of transmitting HIV sexually, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so yeah, this guy sucks. Uh, what was he sentenced to? Does it say his sentence? Life. Oh, he's sentenced to life. Okay. Sent to life in prison. God damn. It's in the title, TJ. Oh, you're what, right. What, what, did he, what did he get for it? What did that boy get for it? Well, it never said anywhere in the body of the article. I didn't read the headline. Dude, life in prison for flinging a few paws loads hey, you know and memeing on you guys the guys think, afterwards? Paul, I know I you mean, were thinking, dude. It's just those limey fucking Brits. Unfortunately, here at home, we got assholes doing the same thing. Uh, yeah, mm. but we only give them 50 years here. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, a more reasonable more sentence. Lenient. Man who intentionally contracted HIV to infect others sentenced to 50 years yeah, in prison. Yeah, only got 50 years. Uh, an Arkansas... Um, Man was sentenced to prison after uh, he. An Arkansas. Uh, an Arkansas. Uh, 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 why did you do become Jeff Goldblum for a minute there, dude? Uh, man. It's uh, an Arkansas. Um, an Arkansas uh, uh, man was uh, 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 sentenced uh, man. Uh, to prison after uh, 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 uh. he admitted to intentionally contracting and then spreading HIV. Stephen Koch, 25, pled guilty to exposing others to HIV as well as uh, eight counts of child pornography, possession of methamphetamine, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Sounds like a Damn. real winner. Jesus so in Christ. England, if you pause load a bunch of dudes, you get life, life. right off the bat. Here, but here, you can... You, you can, gotta get... You, you gotta go on a spree, basically. You gotta rack it up, Yeah, dude. you gotta fucking infect people with AIDS. You gotta have some child porn. You gotta have some meth. You gotta have some drug paraphernalia. And then you get maybe 50 years. Wow. Uh, the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette reported... Circuit Judge Robin Green sentenced Koch to 50 years in Arkansas Department of Correction. Green also ordered him to register as a sex offender, banned him from unsupervised contact with minors, and imposed a suspended sentence agreement of 10 years, which will come into effect after Koch is released I mean, they basically gave this guy life in prison, too. Right. He's 25. He's, he'll get out when he's 75. Yeah, he's never getting out of fucking prison. Uh, police uh, originally detained Koch on drug-related charges before an anonymous informant tipped them about the child porn, which resulted in additional charges. Stuart uh, Surley, chief deputy prosecutor, told the court that authorities found out Koch uh, had purposely contracted HIV after reading text messages and other communications found on his computer. According to the prosecutor, the messages revealed that Koch was making plans to attempt to spread the virus to, to <laughs> oh others. Oh, God, dude. Uh, just so I can get my brain around this, uh, did I understand the state correctly? Mr. Koch intentionally contracted the HIV virus so he could then infect others, Green said during the trial. Uh, Koch admitted to the accusations and added his actions were self-destructive. When Green asked him his motivation for the crime was to hurt other people, he replied, yes. It is unclear whether Koch put anyone at risk of, a, of a contracting the virus. Wow. Uh, so he, he got caught before he could actually spread it to anybody. But he was in the stages of planning. But he was already doing drugs and, chi and child, child porn. Child porn, so. and I mean, yeah, real fucking winner, dude. The uh, kind of dude you would expect to want to spread HIV to people. Everybody get the HIV. Let me get HIV and then I'll spread it. HIV terrorism. 13 cases where people deliberately infected others. Awesome. Is this guy the victim? I don't know. Uh, Let's see. No, I don't think I don't, so. Yeah, look at his eyes. You know, he's How did he spread anything to anybody <laughs> I sexually? Mean, some people got some low standards, dude. Uh, in, okay, so number one, a dozen men injected with HIV positive blood. In 2008, three HIV-positive Dutch men were convicted of grievous uh, bodily harm by the Netherlands court for purposely infecting a dozen men at gay sex parties over the course of two days by drugging them on GHB and ecstasy, then injecting them with a cocktail containing the infected blood of all three men. 
Their sentences range from nine years to 18 months. Oh. It's a little bit lean. The Netherlands are a little... I mean, like, uh, dude, it's a... There's some ex- this is an extreme subculture, dude, because there's people that are actively going out like, you know what, I'm going to give someone this fucking Yeah, they're not disease. even, like, letting it... They're, they're like, we're going to inject you with uh, with the HIV blood cocktail of the three of us. Yeah. Yay, lol, someone getting paused that day, poor sucka. California, land- <laughs> California landscape architect Thomas uh, Gura... Gura? Uh, was convicted of infecting others with HIV based on evidence from 11,000 text messages and three dozen audio clips that saw him boasting of his murderous campaign. Yay, lol, read one text. Someone getting paused that day, poor sucka. Uh, Guerra's boyfriend contacted police after someone on Facebook informed him that Guerra was not only HIV positive, but that he joked about keeping it a secret uh, to his sex partners. I was hours away from pro- pro- proposing to this individual. I don't even know who I was living with. I don't know who I had fallen in love with. There are many people who are being hurt and could potentially still be hurt. It needs to stop. There's hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of text messages where he's talking about intentionally infecting people with HIV. Texts where he's uh, stating he's negative to people, then bragging to others about giving people his positive <laughs> load. Damn, dude. It's po- so, look, This is a positive episode, dude. Uh, Guerra remained positive load. impenitent and blamed his victims for being sexually reckless. He was convicted of violating a California health code and sentenced to six months in jail. Damn, Cali doesn't give a fuck. They're just like, yeah. In California, super cool with the HIV. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot more here. Um, He's taken my life away. When 45-year-old British mother of three, Cara Wilkinson, began developing medical symptoms that would include four heart attacks, pneumonia, osteoporosis, and severe hair loss, a physician suggested she be tested for STIs. Instead, her live-in boyfriend, an undertaker named Alan Mason, informed her that he'd been aware of his HIV status Uh, for years. I don't want how the undertaker got fucking (laughs) HIV positive or AIDS. I I really don't want to know. Uh, but feared telling her because he loved her and didn't want to lose her. Uh, Wilkinson told a reporter, he's ruined my life. I'll never forgive him for what he's done. I don't even have a mirror in my house as I can't stand to look at my reflection. He's taken my life away. For effectively killing his girlfriend, Mason was sentenced to two years and eight months in prison. Uh, it might be good for someone to know that because couldn't you just worn a fucking condom? Let's spread it to others so we don't feel so alone. Oh. Seems logical. 2013, an unnamed 32-year-old British man was sentenced to four years in prison for infecting a 16-year-old girlfriend who told authorities that he said they should both spread the virus to as many people as possible so they don't feel so alone and that others would be forced to share in their suffering. Oh, well, misery loves company, yeah, I, I guess. guess. so, right? World's first murder convictions for transmitting HIV. A Ugandan-born Canadian man named Johnson uh, Aziga became aware that he was HIV positive in 1996. He proceeded to have unprotected sex with at least 11 different women without informing them of his status. Seven of them later tested positive for HIV. Two of the women died from AIDS-related illnesses. Johnson was convicted of first-degree murder, the first person in world history to receive a murder conviction for deliberately spreading HIV. Hmm. Sounds like a winner, dude. Nice guy. Oh, by the way, you have AIDS. My goal was to infect as many people as possible. Cool. Uh, In 2014, an unnamed female Kenyan teenager went on to a Facebook group called Kenya Scandals and revealed she'd become infected with HIV after having unprotected sex at a party with a man who'd lied and told her he'd used a condom. As revenge, she made it her goal to infect at least 2,000 men, but she only had sex with 324 of them before making her online confession. I buried the good girl in me and became the bad girl. My goal was to infect as many as possible so far since December. Now I've infected 324 men. Well, you don't... It's Maybe. not... Yeah, it's you, not 100% you, you, you don't. It doesn't have a 100% transfer rate, so, so I mean, no, you probably say- haven't. You probably did a percentage of those. And I make sure to note down uh, their list, which I secretly keeps when I'll be on my deathbed. I will release it. I know I have nothing left to do on earth but wait for my death. But before I do, men will get it. (laughs) Damn, that one fucking careless guy fucked us all. One dick who didn't wrap his fucking dick, dude. Dude, what if I'm in Uganda one day? 
Yeah. And I happen to be looking for some pussy. And this girl happens to be the one that looks at me the right way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just a dude that's honestly and simply looking for some poontang. Should have thought about that before you were male. And yeah, I didn't HIV do. Now. I don't spread pause loads around. You know, I'm a nice guy. I wear condoms. Well, when after I that need experience, to you will be Paul. <laughs> yep, you'll be a gift giver, dude. Man, he just fucked going to Uganda for me. But you know what, Paul? You always have a job, dude. We, yeah, we saw the supply. For My dream of vacationing in Uganda and having a busty. You know, lady in waiting there to take care of me is over now because it might be this one. Uh, he gets off on infecting people. Michael John Neal, an Australian father of five, was found guilty in 2008 of 15 criminal charges that included attempting to infect another person with HIV, rape, and procuring sexual penetration by fraud. Whoa, what? I don't know. Meth-fueled, of course. <coughs> For years, he'd held meth-fueled orgies he called conversion parties where his purpose was to deliberately infect as many men as possible. According to his prosecutor, Neil boasted to friends that his genital piercing aided in the transmission, and he estimated he'd infected at least 75 men. Uh, he told one partner that he gets off on infecting people. A court-appointed uh, psychiatrist called Neil the most evil man he'd ever encountered in 20 years of his practice. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I love that that's what he contributed to the trial with his great training. Just, he's evil. He's the most evil man. <laughs> he's evil. And dude, a lot of these people that do this are really slutty, too, so it doesn't help that. I mean, like, we've heard this woman fuck 300-plus dudes, and this person fuck 300-plus people. He didn't tell his 300 partners due to fear of rejection. What, what, what do these people find all the time to fuck, dude? That's what I want to know. That's all they do. 36-year-old Missourian David Magnum... <laughs> became aware of his HIV status in 2003. Can't make this shit up, dude. For the next 10 years until his arrest, he estimates he had sex with 300 people, none of whom he informed about his status due to fear of rejection. It is documented that he infected at least one person, his roommate, who went uh, to police after Magnum sheepishly admitted his status to him. Uh, female singer infects male partner. Uh, Nadia ben Benea? Benesa? I don't know, was a member of the all-female German pop band No Angels, uh, which has been described as the biggest-selling German girl band to date. Prestigious title. Yes, I yeah. know, right? In 2010, she was convicted of causing grievous uh, body harm, bodily harm uh, as a result of having unprotected sex with three men between 2004 and 2006 without informing them of her HIV status. One of uh, them men became infected with HIV, uh, Benesa sentenced 300 hours of community service. Oh, Fair man. enough. Hey, 300 hours of community service. She probably spread it around a little more while she's out there cleaning the park. You know, <laughs> she what I learned mean? her lesson. Um, wow, how many of these are there? There's a lot. All right, we're gonna read. I don't know. Let's see which one has the most interesting headline. He got sexually aroused by causing pain to females. She sought revenge on all black men. That's kind of interesting. He infected at least 14 women. There are videos of him possibly infecting people. Okay, so black men, black men for yeah. sure. Oh, this is Jim Goad wrote this. That's the dude who wrote the Redneck Manifesto, so that's kind of neat. Uh, anyway, um, she sought revenge on all black men. British hair salon receptionist, receptionist, Sarah Jane Porter, allegedly was infected with HIV by a black lover. She then embarked on a five-year revenge mission to infect as many black men as possible. Maybe she was just looking for an excuse to fuck a bunch of black dudes. Yeah, yeah I'm on a mission. Uh, <laughs> with HIV. A DJ and promoter that she infected described her as pure evil and said her cruelty and dishonesty made me feel so worthless. Huh. All right. Sounds like well, a lovely person. Well, I mean, I, if it was just a Joe Schmo off the street, I wouldn't put much stock in that, but it is a DJ. Yeah, as a DJ. And he promoter, knows what he's dude. talking about. He's promoting shows. And he's a, a DJ. I mean, come yeah. on. I'm with a DJ. Oh, my God, dude. That's a fucking... <laughs> you remember that song? Yeah, dude. That's from like 1995. Excuse me, Mr. Banta. I'm with a I'm with a DJ. I'm with a DJ. Love my... Ah, I'm with a DJ. Remember so, that song, Paul? You guys feel more no. positive after this episode, dude? We have people who are pro. I do. <laughs> I do feel pro more HIV, positive. <laughs> <laughs> pro HIV, pro anorexia. Uh, Look, guys. We should sell shirts as like, I am DFF positive. It'd be good shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys got some good dieting advice. Look, we're all fat. I mean, we could lose some weight. Hey, the you know another five, good way? The five bites diet. You know another good way to lose weight? Get HIV. 
You will lose weight on HIV. Dude, I could go get go get paused and then we could put another tier on the Patreon for like a thousand dollars. Get paused a month. by paused by Paul. Paused by Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. There you go. <clears throat> yeah. It's coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not do that. That sounds like a legal problem. <laughs> For Paul, it is not for us. We do nothing about it. We How is it a legal problem when I advertised? That's what it is. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. pausing people. They know it's then. It's not illegal to have these parties if you're straight up like, "Hey, I've got AIDS. Want to fucking jump on my dick?" It's not uh, illegal yeah, to that's fuck not legal. somebody. So right? Paul's full disclosure. They'll, they'll sign a fucking waiver, yeah. dude. The Paul waiver. The pause right. waiver. I mean, they're they're joining the Patreon tier with the intent of getting the pause by know, Paul. Yeah, they're getting paused. <laughs> All right. What happened to your new style, Paul? What new style? Oh, hmm. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Could have swore you debuted. I was a late. New style. Oh, I was late to the show, and now you're gonna give me shit for it. I was sorry. a few minutes late to the show. I'm sorry. 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 All right. Thank you guys for watching. This has been our DFF on pro anorexia and pro AIDS. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, you know what? By oh, the way, okay. guys. Sorry. Uh, if there's another subculture or weird group of people you want us to cover, uh, leave that as a comment. Down, yeah, and no plain Jane ones. We want the real. We want some crazy ones. The craziest ones you guys know. Yeah, and if you want to take my pause load, leave a comment down below. Yeah.